So last week, we saw the Bucks make a trade that I think we all agreed made them by far the favorites in the East, maybe the favorites in the whole league. Now, the Celtics answered by trading for Drew Holiday and putting themselves in an arms race with the Bucks. How do y'all feel? Everything I said last week, all that Milwaukee and five stuff, that's out the door. That's out the door. <laughs> My mind was instantly changed as soon as I saw this trade. Really? I thought this, okay. I, yeah, and listen, we're going to get into it. This was a fantastic move for the Boston Celtics and it was probably mm. the best one that, that they can do. I think it was I think it was the best move that they've made all offseason. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean it's hard not to be, right? It's a trading for an all star. I mean see, that or, Jalen Brown. How do you feel was, about Porzingis or whatever? Yeah, they yeah. re-signed Jalen Brown. They went ahead and got Porzingis, which is a fucking great player. He was borderline all star last season. Then on top of that, you end up with Drew Holiday, who is one of the best one of the better point guards in the NBA today, and he fills in a lot of the gaps that they once had before. He's basically a better version of Marcus Smart. Um, so yeah. they, they did their thing. They cooked. For sure. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to get into that. We're going to talk the ramifications for the Celtics, what their teams going to look like next year, how they compare to the other contenders in the league and the East. We're going to get into James Harden drama, talk about some media day headlines. And as you see by the title, we're going to go through every single NBA team and name the breakout star for next year. No, star might be used a little bit loosely for some of these teams, but you know what I mean? The breakout player for each team. It's going to be a great. Exactly. Episode. We lied again. It's a breakout player. Let's do it. But before <laughs> they go ahead and indulge in the episode, they have to go ahead and leave a like on this video. If you're watching on YouTube, talk to on all them. audio platforms, you got to go ahead and give us five stars, download it. We all know you enjoyed this pod. And then on top of that, I think we're going ahead and doing a giveaway. We're giving away a PS5, we actually. Ooh, we are. we are. Really? That's yep. the word on the street? <laughs> yep. And Last two episodes, we told you guys about it. What we're going to do is, give, like Mike Mo said, giving away a PS5. How you enter? Simple. You follow us on Twitter. That's it. Right now, we're up to 2,800 followers. We had like 600 a couple weeks ago. Y'all are yeah. moving there quickly. As soon as we hit 10K followers on Twitter, we're giving away that PS5 to one random follower. Again, all you got to do, go to the description, click on our Twitter profile, and follow us. In a couple months, once we hit 10K, you might get a PS5. It might just be sent to you. Who knows? That's simple, bro. Let's get into it. <laughs> the cranium is crazy. Oh, my God. I mean, I really don't know, don't know what to say. Yeah, man. Let's, let's circle back to the Celtic stuff. Let's start there. Donovan, I know you said you just said that your Bucks and five take is gone and that you yeah. think this is a great move. I want to hear from you first because you've been, along with me, but mostly you, been the most critical of the Celtics throughout this whole offseason. I have. Give I me have. your first thoughts. So I think that one of the biggest things that we've talked about for the Celtics throughout this entire era is the fact that like if you are trying to lean into Jason Tatum being the primary ball handler, your team is probably going to fail because he's not he's just not that guy, right? Like he's not the, he's in terms of like, he's not the Luca guy. He's not the, the hard yeah, guy. Explain you, what you mean. Cause it, yeah. we're not saying Luke Tatum's not great. It's that he's not that specific type of player that should be the engine <clears throat> of an offense as a playmaker. Yeah. So like when you're talking about guys like Luca Harden, right? Bron, you can run your entire offense around him. They can run every single action. They can, they can be the one getting the bucket and they can be the one facilitating for others. And so for yeah. Tatum, he's just not that level of playmaker as as a Luca, as a Braun. And so if you're running your offense through him, hoping that he's going to be that level of playmaker, you're probably setting yourself up for failure. And so when yeah, you have that's him... that's the best way to deploy him. You're forcing him to be something he's not. Yeah. And so when you have him and Jalen Brown, and, you know, but Jalen Brown has his issues that we've talked about, you don't have... A facilitator you don't really have a point guard bringing drew holiday in like mo said you're bringing in a souped up marcus smart you're bringing in somebody who is a better perimeter defender than marcus smart was you're bringing in somebody who's going to be better with the ball in, in his hands and now tatum and brown are going to be freed up to just go out and get buckets all day long and you have somebody who's going to be smart with the ball and you don't really <laughs> have to worry about how erratic they're going to be at the end of games like I, this this really couldn't have been better because their major flaw is, in my opinion, it's solved. Right now, yeah. they have they have other problems. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. There's there's other things that they need to address. But in terms of the one thing that was killing them for year in and year out, that I think is solved, and I think that that's why it's a win. Okay, I have a little bit different opinion, but along the same lines. Mo, Mo what do you think? You go first. No, yeah, I agree with Donovan for the most part. Like. 
Drew Holiday solves all of the issues that they did have, and he is a cleaned up, more refined version of Marcus Smart because he's just uh, he's an, a couple of tiers higher of a scorer, phenomenal defense, and he is the type of point guard to where I don't want to say whether he'll he'll calm everything down and help orchestrate the offense, but he can make the simple passes. I'm not going to sit here and say he's one of the best passers in the NBA or a fantastic playmaker or anything like that. But with that being said, he's very solid at what he's do at what he does and he's exactly what they need now personally like you know what i'm saying if you're asking me about do i have him over the bucks probably not because i still put a lot of i still put a lot of expectations on onto jason tatum's shoulder and also jalen brown yeah. at the end of the day it's up to them if they want to ele- if they can elevate to that level um but overall like i feel good about this trade now they did lose a lot of size and they're relying on I don't know 37 38 year old Al Horford and I feel like Those NBA fans have been waiting for his fucking knees to implode any minute now bro <laughs> so like that's kind of scary but overall they did good but I'm not jumping up and down like oh it's over or the bucks are like they have it's neck and neck it's still not neck and neck to me if I'm being completely honest with you because Drew's fantastic but like he has his moments too you know yeah. or, and he's not the type wait, to you don't think give me the ball get the fuck it's not neck and neck now. I can't yeah, say it's neck me, and neck. Me, I think I, it's close to neck and neck, but we'll get to that later. We're, after we talk about the team, wow. we're going to talk about them compared to every other team. So we'll save that. I think this is great because by trading Marcus Smart, they have a clear need at point guard, right? Even before they got rid of Marcus Smart, Donovan, we were saying for years, like you said, they need a playmaker. They can't force Jason Tatum to be that. You trade Marcus Smart, that makes that weakness even bigger of a weakness. Mm-hmm. So I think this Drew Holiday trade gets them back to where they were with Marcus Smart. I think Drew can replace him perfectly and is, but look, say Drew's a little bit better of a playmaker than Marcus Smart because he's more of a dynamic off the dribble driver that can use that driving ability to create plays for others a little bit better. But like, like most said, he's not a great passer. You know, he's not like, he's not Rondo. He's not going to be out here filling their need. Exactly. You know, he's not going to make them go from having no playmaker to an elite one. They just have a playmaker, right? Like, I think it puts them back where they were before. But what I think is interesting is they basically this offseason got rid of Grant Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, Marcus Smart, and Robert Williams. Four players for two. Drew Holiday and Porzingis. That's in totality what they did. So they're trading depth for basically two more star level players they didn't have before. And I think the big thing we neither one of you guys talked about is the fact they lost Robert Williams, which I actually Mo did talk about that because he talked about being reliant on Al Horford's old ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to know what you guys think is obviously Drew Holiday, you'd rather have him than Marcus Smart. No matter how marginal the passing difference is, he's a fucking way better player than Marcus Smart. He's an all-star. He has his flaws in the playoffs, but he's a better player. Do you guys feel confident enough that Christoph Porzingis is gonna have a huge impact over what Robert Williams brought? Does yeah. that would you you'd clearly rather have KP than Robert Williams? It de- it depends. I think a lot of it does depend on like whether Al Horford can hold up. But mm-hmm. I do think that for two guys who are like in any in any situation, one of the tiebreakers might be like, okay, well, one guy is going to be there and another guy is not. They're both kind of injury prone. And so when I'm looking at that, I think having KP there might give them a little bit more flexibility in terms of like running a two big lineup. And that not, that might not tank the entire offense the way that it would have if you have Horford and Robert Williams out there. Yeah. Um, so I think that they can, they can do that. And let's say that Al Horford is cooked and we get to May or whatever, and he's just not playing. If you put Porzingis at the five, then you can still have a lineup where you have your four best <clears throat> dynamic offensive players. And then you can still have Drew White, Tatum and Brown. And with Porzingis, like, I think that's a really good closing lineup that you can run with and yeah. feel fairly confident. Yeah. In. I agree. It's, I agree. It makes it's them good. a totally different team. Yeah, it does. It does. But they yeah, were banging. They were banging their head better. against the wall for three years, not doing, like, not accomplishing yeah. the ultimate goal. So you're changing it up. Yeah, I think when we saw them at their best two years ago under Ima Yudoka, it was because Robert Williams was fully unleashed. He was like all defense level defender, being that weak side help defender, playing alongside Al Horford. Al Horford was the center in the lineups, defending pick and rolls, and Robert mm-hmm. Williams was defending the guy in the corner, coming in to help and just destroy everything at the rim. That yeah. was best case scenario for the Celtics that we've seen so far, getting them to the finals. So now you lose Robert Williams, you don't have that anymore. But also, last year under the new coach, Joe Mazzulla, they didn't that wasn't their bread and butter anymore. 
he's a different coach than Yudoka, and he was much more offensive leaning. And whether it be because of that or because of Robert Williams' health, probably both, we saw his minutes kind of reduced to being like a 20, 25 minute get per game score. I mean, player. And if that's going to be the case, I guess it makes sense to lose him because even if that ceiling of what could be if he's maximized is there, you're not playing with a coach that's going to want to maximize that and maybe his health doesn't hold up. So now by going to the Porzingis model, you're just a lot more offensive leaning, I think. And obviously don't have as much depth, but just even your style plays can be entirely different. Like either whether or not they play Horford or White in the starting lineup, they're going to be a five out team now. Yeah. So that's just, you know, it's an entirely different look than what they were in previous years. And it's probably what was Joe Mazula wants. So I guess my question is, Mo, do you have faith that that offensive leaning five out three point shooting model that we saw a little bit of last year is going to be a better strategy than the defensive oriented one from 2021? At the end of the day, like it just all comes down to health between Al Horford and Christos Porzingis. I think God. it's probably not it's not bad to go ahead and lean that way. I think the Celtics yeah. finished top five in defense last year after <laughs> getting off into a super slow start and everyone was panicking and whatnot. I remember that vividly. So I think they'll be just fine defensively. But when it comes to teams targeting you in the playoffs, they are in a super vulnerable spot now because now you got Christos Porzingis, you know what I'm saying? And Al Horford and those are like your two main options and if something happens to those two you know then <laughs> who are you calling off the bench Luke They're Cornett thin, you want him jumping from the free throw yeah. line just like he <laughs> like like what is he supposed to do he is athleticism deficient you know what I'm saying so it's like do I think it's a better strategy probably because Joe Mazzulla like you said all signs point towards like he's a three point merchant I was watching uh, his <laughs> I was watching his interview with on JJ Reddick's podcast the other day and it's clear as day like you know he's all into the numbers and stuff like that at first yeah. at least or at least throughout the regular season and they're gonna cruise to it and they might actually in my opinion be the number one seed in the oh yeah Eastern Conference or maybe the entire NBA bro it's very yeah, I can very I can very much see that world for but sure my fear problem, is just ha- exactly talk about it yep yeah go ahead because you're saying you're gonna say your fear is they fall apart in the playoffs before I cut you off oh yeah I'll, I'm just saying yeah. like they're vulnerable and they have less when it comes to the big man front they have less options yep. to run to and that's what they're got, willing yeah. to give up you gotta hope that they make it to the playoffs with those two guys who are not the poster of health well then again we're projecting for Horford he's shown us no reason to believe he's gonna fall off or get hurt he's been fine but it's just you know it's any fucking day now when you're that old playing that heavy of a burden but the question now is for everything Drew Holiday solves for them every year this man shoots under 40% in every playoff series <laughs> He falls apart and cannot make a shot. So yeah. I know we talked about that last week when we talked about uh, Milwaukee shipping him out and why we thought that was a good thing for the Bucks to not have that issue anymore. Does that concern you with the Celtics? Absolutely. Absolutely. Donovan? Real quick, I want to say Drew, Drew, Drew Holiday is just a prettier version of Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart has some of the most <laughs> atrocious turnovers. He just did the most yeah. like, what the fuck are you doing type things. You I know think- what I'm saying? I'm not super worried about it. I'll let Donovan go first. I think there's yeah. reason to believe it might get better for Drew. But what do you yeah. think, Donovan? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too concerned about it. I think when you are in Drew's situation over the last two years, it's really been him and Giannis trying to trying to run the offense. And Giannis is not the guy that's bringing up the offense. You know, that's bringing the ball up, setting everything up. And so a lot of the playmaking stuff has been on Drew. Mm-hmm. And a lot of like the playmaking and the scoring load has been on Drew while also saying, hey, go guard the best player on the other team. That's <laughs> n- that's not necessarily going to be what he's going to do in Boston. Like Jason Tatum is still going to be responsible for getting buckets. Jalen Brown is still going to be responsible for getting all these buckets. KP. Exactly. Now, yeah. now you have Porzingis there. So this offensive load on Holiday is not going to be there. So I don't think that even if he is, even if he does have like a subpar shooting you know, slump in the playoffs. I don't think it's going to be too, too detrimental. We're like the Bucks. Yeah. If Drew Holiday was off, oh, every everything's gone wrong because he's the best one and he had the best chance. If they, if he starts thinking it up, hey, Derek White, you start, you start playing well. Everybody else is fine, and it's they they're going to be okay. The the margin for error on Drew Holiday is much bigger mm-hmm. now that he's in Boston. One hundred percent. I At think the, the decision making mm-hmm. that the Celtics made is based on. They're probably under the, of the belief that he was overtaxed in the playoffs, that too much was asked of him. Like you said, mm-hmm. he's asked to be a creator, passer, and defender. 
And I think with this role with this team, he's going to be asked to think about the game like he's Rondo. Like he's going to be shooting your open, be a spot up guy. Don't obviously take away on the scoring end, but focus on up the, upping your passing skills and focus on that more than you ever have in your career. And I think we can not only see that him be a better passer than we expected coming into this, obviously more energy to put into defense, but his scoring is bad mostly because he's forced to take all these mid-range jump shots in the playoffs and just driving to the rim, putting his fucking shoulder down, forcing it. And that's not really his best skill against the playoff defense. So if he's not asked to do that, you could probably assume he's going to have a more efficient outing in the playoffs when he's playing off of two other star ball handlers. Thanks. So I think you'll yeah. see his strength shine more and the weaknesses be less of an issue with this roster construction. And at the end of the day, this has to fall on Jason Tatum. I'm surprised I'm doing this. Donovan, I feel like I got your mask on right now. I'm bringing up <laughs> legacies. There is let's no talk, excuse it. no, it's true. for you to not like a, the coaches. Everyone is leaning on you and everyone gave you exactly what you need to go ahead and thrive. Everyone's talking about, oh, they don't have a point guard. Well, you got a point guard now, bro. And also you have a, zo- a zooted up four, a 7-3 sniper. So there's no real reason for him to not elevate his own game. Um, Even though, like, yes, like, you know, he's going to be expected to he's he he. he He's going to be expected less to go ahead and play make, but more to go ahead and be pick his spots while also dishing out and helping Drew along that. So, so I still need to see that growth in order for me to fully believe. And can he itch to the top six best players in the NBA conversations or it's straight away from like the top 10? I don't know. That's Maybe. what I want to say. Listen, listen, you have you have by you know mask on or whatever we're gonna we're gonna push that forward the expectations that i have with the Celtics <laughs> this year are extremely high at this point and i think that for tatum he's going to be in conversations for scoring leader i think that he's going to be in conversations for mvp i think that the celtics listen eat as much as like as bad as their meltdown was they were in game seven of the eastern conference finals last exactly. year and so they now have they shifted things around. They wanted to change up the formula. They've been in game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals each of the last two years. They have one opponent this season, and that's the Milwaukee Bucks. And so, like, both of them are championship or bust. But I think that Boston right now is in a better position than Milwaukee. I think both of them have to figure mm-hmm. out some some of their depth issues. Mm-hmm. But, like... Like Isaac was saying, they're going to eat in the regular season. And because of that, like, I think this is Tatum's time going into year seven, right around that time where people, you know, start entering their like prime prime. This is Tatum's, this is Tatum's moment to start racking up the accolades and the wins. And I think that like, I think that he, that he does. I think that this is the season that we see Jason Tatum go to even another level. Something that Joe Maluz, Joe Mazzula said in the interview also is that, Something we all saw on this podcast, all NBA fans saw across the world, the Celtics had no counters. And this is their opportunity, like you said, Isaac, for them to get creative as ever to do whatever they want on the offensive end. They have three players, really like five players who can shoot the three. They're three level scorers. You drew, we see in a lot of times and moments of him last year on the Celtics getting to the post up. You know what I'm saying? And everybody on the team can do that. So it's like there's the ceiling. The sky is a limit and there's no more excuses for any of that now. Facts. They have yeah. comebacks on comebacks and counters on counters. Yeah, they're just like you said, they're a very, very versatile team. But also it's it's a weird it's a weird place to be in when you're extremely versatile with your top six players, which are maybe the best six, top six in the league. But after that, you fall out dramatically. And in the playoffs, you're going to have a six or seven man rotation. So... You could say that losing death may also might make them less versatile because they have no longer have that lob threat big man, no longer have mm-hmm. the backup point guard. So they kind of like they can do what they can with those top six and be as creative as they can with them. But that's who they are. They're really bought into the identity of these top players. You don't have a lot of change ups in terms of roster personnel and putting in new lineups. You had to make those change ups within the players you have there. So basically, Joe Mazzulla is going to have to put on a coaching masterclass for this to be the best it can. So it'll master. be a good test for him. Let's see it. Yeah. yeah exactly. So let's talk about them versus the Bucks. And we're going to use this as a transition to get into an impromptu TikTok time thing. So instead of just doing the Bucks, I'm going to ask you guys to compare the 
uh, Celtics to all the teams in the West, I mean in the East, and we're going to talk about how they stack up against their competition. All right. Sound Let's good? do it. Yeah. So get this TikTok hook in early in the show. Can you change it up a little bit? Are the Celtics better or worse than these NBA teams after the Drew Holiday trade? First off, the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm going to have to Ooh, sadly this- say better. I'm going to have to sadly say better, bro. This six is ridiculous. Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, Tatum, Porzingis, all above the line defenders. And then you got old ha- Al Horford, old ass, sitting in the back. They're eating, bro. <laughs> still a great defender. Al Horford still hasn't fallen off yet. Yeah. Facts. Yeah, I'm, t- I'm taking the Celtics. Their top six is just too nasty. I think they're better than, than the Lakers. I think the Lakers' depth might come, might come in handy if people start getting hurt. And that's where the Celtics are like very vulnerable. But if we're just talking about last five minutes, who's on the floor, I think I'm taking the Celtics. Yeah. I might have more faith the Lakers can get out of their conference more because of that depth. Like the Celtics, one injury and they're going to be cooked. But True. if it's series versus series, I'd probably pick the Celtics. Yeah. Okay. What about the Phoenix Suns? They're oh, the Celtics they're, easily, they're, bro. They're better. <laughs> <laughs> no, no hesitation? Yeah, no, bro. No one on not. the Suns is playing defense for real. Kevin Durant is your best defender. You're not getting far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think the Suns will be good, but they're going to win with shootouts. And the Celtics are going to have a great defense. And listen, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, and KP, they're not going to get outshot that easy. Like Those are some great offensive players. Exactly. These are two top-heavy teams. But again, Boston, Boston could go six deep where Phoenix stops three deep. And after <laughs> it's 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 Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and then a lot of guys. Janitors. <laughs> exactly. Oh I'm taking gosh. Boston. Okay. Oh my gosh. Don't disrespect Nazir Little, man. He different. Let's relax. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Philadelphia 76ers. It's oh, not a question. Boston. Easy, bro. Boston. Easy. Not Harden, a Harden they just shouldn't got be in the conversation, Denver, bro. With them. Yeah, no, okay. it's not even a question. My bad, my bad. <laughs> the Miami Heat. They fumbled. They fumbled this offseason. <laughs> I don't think that the Heat are going to be better than the Sixers. So, <laughs> they, I don't they know what their chances for real. I don't know what Highsmith is going to do when he has to pick between guarding Tatum running at his face and Porzingis all the way at the corner. They're done, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean... The Heat pushed them to seven. La- I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, the Celtics pushed them to seven last year when the Heat were getting like the best case scenario run they could imagine, and now the Celtics are better. I don't see a reason to not pick the Celtics. They better. They better pray that Caleb Martin can shoot again. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Denver Nuggets. Ooh. Ooh. This is tough. This is tough. This is good. Wow. Jokic um, is going to destroy Al Horford, bro. They have no, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, they have no chance. I'm stuck, I'm stuck. And if he destroys he, Horford and Porzingis guards him? Bro, oh it's God. Lunchables, bro. It's a buffet. Holy <laughs> shit. All you can eat all day. Who are they going to, what are they going to do? He's going to pull a James uh, Winston. He's going to eat the W. <laughs> yeah, nah. It's going to be close, though, because Jamal Murray is going against an insanely tough defense. But if Jokic yeah. is truly as great as I think he is, I might have to lean towards the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> and the thing ah. is, though, they also the Denver also has wing defenders in Aaron Gordon, wing defender. Denver also has good wing defense <laughs> with Aaron Gordon manning it. So they're kind of equipped to hold up against the uh, Celtics' strength. Probably, but if Michael Porter Jr. was shooting the way that he was in the finals, Boston Boston can get this one fairly easily. I this one is close. If they played in a series, it's going to seven. This is going to take a game-winning shot to win the finals. Like these, <laughs> they just seem so even on paper right now. I think I'm still going Boston though. Listen, if, if it's super even, I'm going to go to the gut team that has the best player in the world. And that's if the, fair. If Nikola Jokic wants to play basketball that day for real, oh, it's over. He could he could end this <laughs> at four. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, last but not least, the Milwaukee Bucks. They're, they're I'm better going, than the Bucks. Oh my God! Now you tripping? I'm going with the two best players. I'm tripping. I'm going with the two best players in that series, Yoke, uh, Giannis and Dame. Period. Yeah, that's I that's think, not the two best players in, in that series. Tatum is better than Dame. Sure, I, help. I think even if you think the Celtics have a more talented <laughs> roster, one to five, I think the combo of Dame and Giannis and how they amplify each other's skills that's going to be unguardable. The best two players on the Celtics are not unguardable as a combo at all. They're very good players, but then together don't make this unstoppable force that the Giannis and Dame pair do. I think that combined is going to be game-breaking. 
Listen, the Celtics have shown, even, even when they were fumbling series away, there's been one thing that's been consistent. They are not scared of the Milwaukee Bucks. They don't care <laughs> oh, who gosh. is out there. And if you think that Drew Holiday is going to go play against his old team, he's going to have Dame in a straight jacket once again. He's going to show Milwaukee, you guys messed up trading for this Dame. man should, is stuck on 2018 <laughs> that's know, not happening listen, <laughs> it's gonna happen he doesn't, have anthony, he doesn't have anthony davis to blitz dame every play this time I yeah think exactly be fine. <laughs> with Giannis, See, y'all, with Giannis underestimate, y'all underestimate the dog that drew holiday has in him do you think oh, this no, man, man is not motivated it, it doesn't matter how big the dog is bro you're not stopping a Giannis pick and roll with shooters surrounded watch drew around holiday him, bro. do it watch drew holiday do it <laughs> Watch. Drew Holiday is Gary Payton. This is crazy. No, he's no, not even Gary. He thinks he's Jesus, bro. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me the bucks. Yeah, we, we can talk about that a little more now that we're out of that TikTok segment. I, I, I'm still picking the bucks. I think the whole thing with the Celtics is they have four basically all-star level players. And I think Chris Milton's going to be better next year. And I think Brooke Lopez is still going to be one of the top three defensive player of the year finishers probably. And if that's the case, I think they also have four like near All Star caliber players, and I think that that combination of Giannis and Dame together is going to be one of those pairings like we saw when LeBron and AD first got together, like we saw when Steph and KD first got together. That their skills complement each other so perfectly that it doesn't matter if you're more talented; those two have the impact together that amplify each other. That's going to be like impossible to game plan against. Yeah, I think. Dame's sim- simply Dame's presence on the Milwaukee Bucks just amplifies and opens up an entire mystical wonderland of all these insane scenarios because Dame's one of the three best pick and roll ball handlers in the NBA and it's been like that for a minute now and he's never ever in his entire life has had to has gotten a chance to or an opportunity to play with someone like Giannis who's, who, who commands so much opportunity or attention in the paint. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. with that being said, going back to the word opportunity, it's limitless and everyone's going to eat on this team because you're going to have to give something up. You know what I'm saying? You can't I don't commit. People realize everything Giannis has done in his career so far has been with him being a creator and him being unstoppable, going at a guy one on one. You can't stop him. You know how impossible it's going to be to stop this motherfucker when he does that, but also you give the ball to Dame and you have to deal with his gravity as a pick and roll ball handler. You have to throw bodies at Dame to stop him. Bro, that's going to leave Giannis wide open to be the most unstoppable role man we've ever fucking seen. The best players on the best shooters on this team have been Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday and Pat Connington. You could also throw in Brooke Lopez. I can't disrespect that man too, but having Dame on air, arguably in my opinion, the second best shooter of all time. Bro, there's just there's no stopping. Listen, that. listen, that's fair, but you're wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> because listen, and the Celtics, as we saw last year, they moved into this like very heavy three point focused offense, but they were still working with this Ime Udoka roster. It has completely changed, and so now everything that they want to do offensively, they have the personnel for it. And so it's different trying to run, trying to just like, you know, go and chuck threes when Al Horford and Robert Williams are your bigs. Now, when you have Porzingis and he's the one that's taking threes, he's the one that's facing the floor. It's going to be a little bit better. You have your second year, like you have a little bit more continuity. I, and again, like we've all said, they have a better version of what, of whoever they had at point guard in Drew Holiday compared to Marcus Smart. So I think like if the Bucks won, I would not be shocked at all. Like a hundred percent. Like why? Why would that, you know, shock me? But I just think that I think that Boston's continuity. I think that their offensive prowess from basically one through four with Holiday White and then the Jays. I think that's going to be able to to take them a long way. I have a question for Isaac. Do you think that we're talking about offense? They have to play fucking defense. And for the most part, I'm talking. I'm not worried about who's going to guard Dame. Do you think Isaac that they have? the potential to contain Giannis and eventually surpass him on the defensive end, which overall I think would be if they could, if they could contain them on defense, they might win that series. What do you think? Isaac? You're asking, do I think the Celtics have the personnel to stop Giannis and slow him down? Yes. A oh, fucking no. I mean, <laughs> God, obviously not. <laughs> I mean, who's going to be the primary defender on him? Christoph Porzingis? Porzingis, maybe Tatum. I don't know what they want to Tatum do. Tatum, be fucking for real. I, <laughs> I guess, I mean, ideally it would be Al Horford, but do we want to keep taxing him with that type of workload being this old? 
Like it's if, happened okay, before. It's if happened Horford comes before. out and he looks like he looks in previous years and can be a competent defender on Giannis, sure. I think they have a game plan that they could probably guard him as effectively as anybody's going to under a normal circumstance. But when you throw Dame into that, okay, so what does that look like? Let me start there. When you stop Giannis, you have to put a strong one-on-one defender on him. It'll be Al Horford probably. And you have to have a lot of help at the nails and leave wing shooters open and not let the corners open, but have wing shooters. Who are the wing shooters going to be? Pat Connaughton and Chris Middleton. I don't think you want to leave them open to shoot you out of a game. Those are pretty fucking good shooters. We can we can see. I think. Listen, if I if the option is let Pat Connaughton and Chris Middleton, who is coming off I mean, all these injuries, simple, <laughs> I know, I know. But I'm saying, like, if yeah. you are if you're saying like, where are we going to dedicate these resources to, and you have to kind of start choosing and do all that stuff, obviously. I'd rather Pat Connaughton and Chris Middleton beat me than just let Giannis roll <laughs> yeah. to the rim and be be running dunk man and get all the points that he wants. But I listen, it's a very fair question and it's a very real problem that Boston has to solve in terms of how they're going to guard that pick and roll and that action. But I think that we're asking a lot about the depth for Boston. And I think that the same goes for Milwaukee like Bobby Portis is gonna he's coming off the bench he's great after that it's like is okay Jay Crowder and then who like they're one they're also one injury away from not really having a lot of mobility and then especially when you have Portis Giannis and Brooke and that's kind of your like the the majority of like your team in your front court that's that's also like you are also very front court heavy in that sense. So they also have some depth issues to figure out. No, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, any team that has four elite players is going to have depth issues. It's just, I guess it comes down to if they're both in that circumstance, who's top five do you believe in more? And I'm going to go the one with the duo that I think will prove to be one of the most unstoppable duos you've seen in the past 20 years. Yeah, That's high praise. exactly. It's high praise. Yeah, I mean, for most teams, think about it this way: most teams that the Celtics are going to beat, it's going to be because they have the best third and fourth option you could fucking around the league. Like nobody's going to be able to outshoot them three and four. The Bucks can keep up in that in that size. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, relatively. I mean, Brooke. I who hope. Would you I hope nobody we, we, gets we all hurt. rank. We all rank Brooke above Kristaps Porzingis. So, oh yeah, I'm not going to hear that you don't think they're on the same level. No, I mean, <laughs> Chris Milton and Drew Holiday. I mean, they've both been... A lot of times people say Chris Milton's the second best player on the Bucks. They were teammates, so... <laughs> and guess what? And guess what? The last two years, they were lying. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dramatic. Chris Milton had an off year last year because he was hurt. He wasn't yeah. a pumpkin. He wasn't terrible. No, but no, but he's he was he was hurt. He was compromised. Let's see yeah. if he can get back to where he was. Because yeah. if, if the Chris Milton that they get this year is the same that they were getting last year, he... Is not better than Drew Holiday, in my opinion. Okay. Anyways, um, let's move on real quick yeah. to let's talk about Media Day. Before we get to the main part of this episode, let's do go over some quick headlines from Media Day and talk about them. Listen, Jimmy Butler's hair. It has to be addressed. Yeah, we are it. the predominant hair podcast on the NBA community. We are gonna get to that during TikTok time. We're gonna have a big segment about Jimmy <laughs> Butler's hair. So just wait on it and you're gonna hear about it. After that, the next thing is obviously James Harden. It was the first for media day. He wasn't there. He didn't show up, wasn't with the team. The team was in Colorado. They had to check in with Jokic, make sure they're good in that hood. But James Harden wasn't there. <laughs> check he in reported with Jokic. To the first day. <laughs> he reported to the first day of training camp. So now he's with the team and is apparently dedicated to being a Sixer and winning games. Ooh. Lies. You know what that Do means? Do y'all buy it? Are you going to think the Sixers are going to have a productive year? No, not at all. Oh man, this not, feels not, not like at all. James Harden just brings bad vibes, and the only reason, <laughs> the only reason why he's dedicated is because them checks are dedicated to his bank account, and yeah. he needs that, right? Like he just he wants his money, and so that's like that's why he's showing up. But for somebody who has gone on literally worldwide tours to slander Daryl Morey, no, I don't <laughs> think this is going to be a productive season for the bro. Sixers. From from camps to China to random ass clubs. In Houston, <laughs> holding up signs saying Daryl Morey is a liar. Blow. He was with Chinese kids and the hoes, both yeah. of which shitting on Daryl Morey. <laughs> bro, off, bro, he was, oh my God, bro, he was off alcohol, 
doing all that shit. Bro. Oh, and, uh, that's why I'm like, no, I'm not gonna say when that. it comes to this entire situation. <laughs> <laughs> I, was about, I was about to add to it. I'm not. I'm not. I don't, I don't, I don't know what James Harden does. <laughs> that's why I stopped immediately <laughs> when I said that, bro. But I can't. I can't. I can't. So add I've, been, I've been watching. I've been Inferno. watching the Showtime Lakers show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. The stars right now. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, I boys. don't see a way in where they're gonna be able to fully just go gloss over all this. And I think that James Harden, like you said, Donovan, is just simply doing this. We get paid at the end of the day and also keep this professional. Like, being real here, James Harden is on one of his last legs of his NBA, of his high level NBA career. You know what I'm saying? So there's only so yeah. much leeway of someone being absolute tyrant bastard throughout the entire offseason that you're going <laughs> to give. If I'm the Los Angeles Clippers, I'm looking at his track record. You asked out of Houston, you went ahead, forced your way out of Brooklyn, and you cried your entire offseason out of the Philadelphia 76ers and you want me to give you X, Y, maybe Z picks, Terrence Mann, whatever the fuck else that they have to offer. I'm really trying to strongman you and I'm not, I don't want to give you what you want, what you want because of the pro- product that he is. And hopefully yeah. what I'm assuming that someone got into his head, told him you have to play it right, have to play it safe, no more media antics because you're literally diminishing your value. Yeah, he has no choice at this point. He has to be there and I'm with you. I'm When I'm ranking the top five teams in the East, I almost want to disqualify them because I don't think this is going to be their team by Christmas. You know, like it's hard yeah. to imagine that this team sticks together. If they do, it's hard to imagine they overcome this insane distraction. They're probably cooked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're cooked. They're cooked. Yeah. Let's, let's rapid fire through these headlines. That's enough Sixers talk. Next thing I have, the <laughs> the Brooklyn Nets, man. Every person that stepped in front of a mic talked about how this is Ben Simmons' team this year. Everybody fully expects him to be back. Spencer Dinwiddie said, in many ways, this is his team. Ben Simmons says, this is the most healthy he's been since 2018. He said, I'm back verbatim. Do you guys still have faith in this man? Boy, he's putting the biggest target on his back, bro, because, hey, I ain't gonna lie. Well, bro, 2023 NBA fans are different, and we got AI memes ready for you to fire at any moment, buddy. (laughs) 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 So one off game, one missed three, that off the side of the backboard or whatever, you're not gonna stand a chance. <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be tough, man. I I don't like this talk at all. But do I believe it? Will I buy into it? Of course. I'm gullible. <laughs> no, I've I've no I've no faith. I've no faith in Ben Simmons. Uh, ben he's at the point in his career where I am not going to believe you until you prove otherwise. Because I've heard this several times about Ben Simmons' jump shot, about his ability to to be like ready to come back and play, about what his potential is since all the Philly stuff, since the injury. Show me that you can still hoop and then I'll actually start taking you seriously. But this is Bruh, not a for Did you not, not a, see him hit 10 free comment. throws? What Who type of say? high school <laughs> drill? Like you want me to give you a cookie because you made 10 free throws? You're getting paid tens of millions of dollars. Make the free throws, fam. Like, please. <laughs> Really what this? <laughs> uh, <laughs> NBA Central is so ridiculous. They do what they were doing. <laughs> the <laughs> fucking fire emoji. Ten <laughs> free throws in cool. a row. Ten nice. straight free throws. Come on now. Yeah, man. Oh my goodness. I have a I have Ben Simmons Stockholm syndrome. I'm gonna believe he can come back until he fucking retires. I just I want to hold out so much faith that he can get right if he's healthy. So I will be drafting him in my fantasy basketball league this year. I'll say that. I'm gonna I'm gonna invest in the Ben Simmons comeback. Please do that. Please do that. I need <laughs> I need to get back up in the in the wins column. <laughs> Isaac saying he's a walking. I need to make lick. a run this year. Well, no, being back. serious for two seconds, if he can be at least half of the player that he was back in 2018, which was phenomenal, then solid role player. Maybe good job. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can he be an actual point guard? Can he like help be a force in transition and all that other shit that he used to be great at, bro? The Denver. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, they might be like a seventh, eighth seed, if so, because they have a lot of <laughs> good ass wings. You know, it's just all about yeah. it's the offense and can they can they be creative enough? That's the main issue. And Ben Simmons helps solve that his skill set. But I mean, we don't yeah, know where skill set is guy. at. <laughs> yeah, bro. No. Next thing. headline: Jordan Poole came out here and said him and Kyle Kuzma have championship pedigree and want to bring that to the Wizards and be the leaders for this team and everybody cooked his ass for being Jordan Poole and acting like he's like Curry or something and I think that was unfair to Jordan Poole how did y'all feel about this it kind of goes both ways I can see it both sides because like on one hand Jordan Poole did win a championship right 
And Kyle I mean, Kuzma, it was a meaningful role too. He wasn't just there. Yeah, he was both like him, and, both him there. and Kuzma were very like meaningful parts of championship teams. On the other hand, if you tell me that these are going to be Bilal Koulibaly's vets, no. I don't have a lot of hope <laughs> for, for Koulibaly. Like, I don't, I don't know what his career is going to turn out if Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma are the ones that are like, "Hey, man, this is how you get things done." I'm not sure about it. I'm unsure. That's funny. Listen. I think. Listen, what is he supposed to fucking say? He's a player that got sent here to basically be the star of this team. He has to be a leadership role. Like, this is the role he's thrusted into being probably the best player on the team. I don't really blame him for trying to, to live up to that right away. Yeah, exactly. What else is he supposed to do, bro? And also, for every NBA fan cooking him, I get it. I agree. I probably was cooking him, too, in the comment section. But it's the <laughs> Washington Wizards. What history do they have over the last 15 years they haven't gone past when was the last time they went to the eastern conference finals bro i probably wasn't alive when they did bro oh <laughs> my <laughs> god holy shit west unsells mvp season <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy bro. yeah so i'm like yeah man he did what he was supposed to do he said what he was supposed to say it's just gonna be a fun show to watch yeah <laughs> Next fun, I talk. Uh, uh, th- real quick NBA talk is so funny because when you call a team fun, you just you're calling them trash. You're just like, hey, yeah, <laughs> like you guys are gonna lose a lot, right? But you're gonna have like you're gonna lose, but you're also gonna be on House of Highlights, so like that's fun. So like, like good congrats for your 32 wins, Washington. Like, I ain't gonna lie. He, he ain't lying. <laughs> I hope you're happy. He ain't lying. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Next headline we got. Somebody on the Boston Celtics social media team posted Fire a video them. of Jalen Brown. <laughs> Jalen Brown was standing on the sidelines, just dribbling. The kill pulled this up. <laughs> and so, immediately people re- replied, this motherfucker still can't dribble with his left hand. <laughs> and this video is just hilarious. So no, this was, was doing this. this was a personal attack on Jalen Brown. Bro. Like this was very intentional <laughs> from the Boston Celtics social media team. And <laughs> they did it. so loose. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, I might have to go back on my Celtics take. Whatever (laughs) intern posted this, they have to be incredibly out of the loop. Fire that intern. You're not coming back. And also, they're leaving. You should, whatever social media managers that the Boston Celtics have, they need to leave for a terrible review and staying onto that man's career because this is a target. This was (laughs) literally set up. There's no way. There's no way that you don't know about the issues that this man had. And it's funny because like, these are like very normal drills, drills or whatever, but it's just like, <laughs> I mean, like him losing that, a couple the, times is kind of hilarious. The handle's It's weak. also funny that he's dribbling like shit with his left hand. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's just true. Like, it's hilarious. It's I give, I give NBA Targets. fans, I give Jalen Brand, Jalen Brown one week before this video resurfaces in a month after people start <laughs> playing games. This is terrible. <laughs> This is this is awful. Like this is an illegitimately bad thing to post as the <laughs> Boston Celtics media team. You're supposed to defend your your players. The thing is though, like they're just <laughs> they posting him. It. This is just him. <laughs> the inverted. <laughs> this yeah, this is, so is awful. Funny. Oh this my awful. god, bro. That's why they flipped it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, man. The jokes don't write themselves. <laughs> Next thing we can quickly talk about. Draymond Green is going to miss the next four to six weeks. And because of that, we're going to see Chris Paul start in the starting lineup in the preseason. So we should get a good view of what is the weirdest fit in the recent NBA history. And we're going to get it full tilt. It's going to be hilarious. So we're going to see Chris Paul, CP3, Wiggins, Clay Thompson, and Kevon Looney. Steve Kerr came out and said, yeah. Clay Thompson is going to go ahead and guard power forwards. <laughs> and he got fried to eternity, bro. And that's very really, interesting It probably doesn't to say. even matter because they switch so much that like, that yeah. doesn't really mean much. But it is. But the like, sentiment is just hilarious. Yeah. They're bending over backwards so hard to get Chris Paul in this lineup that Clay Thompson is going to be your Zion Williamson defender. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Chris Paul has hilarious. to go. He has to be traded. <laughs> yeah, man, it's... Every time you look at every video we've seen of him from media day, everyone's like, what the fuck, man? This is really happening. Nobody's excited. Yeah, this is so weird, bro. I mean, it, it it is interesting to see how we adjust fully on that lens, but I ain't gonna lie. This is going to be a peak shit show and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> That's <laughs> greatest that is, to world peace. <laughs> that is cruel. <laughs> that is great. cruel, bro. But yeah, man. 
outside of that, not a whole lot to talk about in media day. I think we can move on to the part this episode is titled after. We're going to go through every NBA team and name their breakout players. Let's do it. I'm ready. The way we did this, so it's not going to be incredibly long, each of us have 10 teams. We both have all have two divisions, and we're going to go through, take turns giving one of our teams. And yeah, instead of all of us giving one player for each team, it's just one of us giving a player for that team. Okay. You guys are good? You guys have got your, got your names pulled up? Yep. Yeah, let's do it. Got my list. All right, I'll go first. I'll start with the Lakers, get the easy one out of the way. I have the Pacific Division. All, all of us got the division of the team we're a fan of and then one other division. So we can all start with our favorite teams. Keep it easy. For the Lakers, easiest pick. I got Austin Reeves. I think this one is not even really debatable. Like, sure, if you think, like, Rui Hachimura is going to keep having a strong year, cool, he could surprise. This team is built around Austin Reeves being a third quasi-star and, like, really taking that next jump and being <laughs> the ball handler they need to relieve some of the pressure off of LeBron. The only way this team works is if Austin Reeves takes a breakout star jump. And I think we all expect the Lakers team to work. So we're all expecting the Austin Reeves to have a big year. Listen, this, this team is, is built around Austin Reeves. It's such a crazy <laughs> thing to say. <laughs> it's a crazy sound bite, bro. <laughs> it's true, though. This team goes as far as it takes them. Listen, this is this is Captain America. This was the breakout guy on <laughs> Team USA. He has his own signature shoe now. I'm, yeah. I'm in lockstep with you. This Captain is Austin America. This is Austin Reeves' team. <laughs> and this is his team. This is his year. Yeah, yeah we exactly should clarify right. real quick what we mean by breakout star. Basically, what that means is the player that's going to surprise the most. The team, the player that's going to make a big improvement this year and be a standout for this team. Yeah. So something also, I don't know why, but it gets on my fucking nerves because when you objectively, <laughs> when you look at the word breakout, like not every single player is going to fit perfectly into this mold. Breakout literally means. When after a certain amount of time, you see a wild uptick in production and consistency and efficiency all across the board. Someone like a la Lyra Markin in last season type shit. And there's no one like this for the Los Angeles Lakers. But I'm sure through this division, Isaac will have someone who fits like this. Exactly yeah, yeah. And when I say breakout, I don't mean they're going to win most improved player. They don't have to be a star. It doesn't got to be like a huge jump. It just means the player that's going to be the surprise of the season for this team. Exactly. And they're pretty much a swing factor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Donovan, what's your what's your first player on first team? All right, so we're going to start with the New York Knicks and okay. breakout player Quentin Grimes. My mm, okay. my mm. guy. Quentin Grimes, first of all, the Knicks have a lot of like it's very jumbled after cuz it's Brunson and then you have a lot of guys with Grimes, Barrett, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo's there now, Emmanuel Quickly's there. I think that Quentin Grimes is going to be able to solidify himself as this very good 3 and D guy. Listen, last year, a court per cleaning the glass, played the fourth most minutes for the Knicks, had the third highest on off numbers for the team. Like he Jeez. is going to he's going to be able to defend guys that Brunson isn't necessarily able to. And he's going to provide spacing. I think that as they find some clarity in the in the backcourt, Grimes is going to be able to really take a step this year. Yeah. Wow. I'm interested. You didn't say R.J. Barrett. Are you past? <laughs> Listen. I was when we were talking about this and I was I was writing down names. I was like, OK, like, is Grimes going to be it? Is it going to be RJ? As soon as I started thinking about RJ, my mind went away from breakout and started going to who can we trade RJ Barrett to? Who, <laughs> where, where can we get him? That's not New York, because I'm I, I was on his side. He had a couple good games in the in the Cavs series. I need him out of a Knicks jersey now. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm I'll done. The turntables. Uh, I was villainized. I was. Assaulted verbally. And now you're on the <laughs> side of the truth. Uh, a random side note. What's RJ's real first name again? I don't know. I really I've don't actually know. What the hell? I, 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 we've been calling I him think, RJ for like seven years. It has to like, be something funny. I've um, honestly never known his real Rowan. name. Rowan. Yeah, there we go. Rowan. Okay. Okay, I did, Rowan I did know that just now off, off the top of my head. But listen, I don't, yeah. I don't really don't care what it is. It's going to have to be like somebody else. Some other team is going to have to say his full name. I, <laughs> That's understandable. He can't be announced at Madison Square Garden by December. That's funny. Well, he will That's be. He's not going anywhere. Bro. Sorry to break it to you. They're not trading him. No. But you're going to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. All right. Yeah, so I, like the, I like the Grimes pick. I agree. Yeah, exactly. I kind of yeah. want me personally, if I were you, Donovan, I don't know why, but maybe, maybe I just like his game more. It's more appealing to me, but I may have would have leaned towards Emmanuel quickly, but Grimes is a great pick, so I can't cap. 
Um, yeah, I, I want I wanted to go to go quickly, but I also mm-hmm. didn't know if it was going to be like breakout because he was like about True. to win six man of the year last year. So True. I'm happy yeah. you brought that up. So for the Southeast, the Atlanta Hawks, I have Jalen Johnson. He's someone who didn't get any burn okay. during his rookie season. Barely got any burn during his second year, too. But his third year, well, actually his second year, he got a little bit of burn. And now this, this coming season will be his third year. And he's someone who his player archetype fits the type of basketball that I envision Quinn Snyder wanting him to thrive in. Being yeah. pseudo run and dunk man while also being an auxiliary an auxiliary piece to help distribute the ball and being not like a Draymond Green S type player, but having a oh, passing chops ability. For sure. Yeah, exactly. Having the passing chops while also being a high level finisher above the rim, which is extremely important. Now, I don't know if he's going to start necessarily day one because we do have a lot of options and spacing is, is important. He's not the greatest shooter in the world, but yeah. I know that when it comes to breakout he has the opportunity and potential to go ahead and do those things now that there's a massive void in the power and the power forward spot now that john collins is gone so he's the perfect player in my mind who fits this breakout mold yeah i think like you said he's not the greatest shooter it comes down to that if he can become an effective shooter at least in the corners then i think he'll break out for sure like you said when you have the passing the rim pressure and having the size to be a solid defender you're one jump shot away from being an incredibly useful player for any team so I like that. I'm. Was that an easy pick for you, or did you consider Onyeka or Onyeka's already like that? He's already like that. Every if you're an NBA nerd, you should know that like this guy's one of the best defenders in the NBA. He's just like relax. He just plays with okay for his position. He is one of okay. One of the best is crazy. One of the whatever. best. What does that mean? Top twenty. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> whatever way you want to put it, that's still fucking impressive. <laughs> um, He's good, for but. Sure. Yeah, his production is already there. Numbers are already nice. Yeah, and he's already had plenty of moments to shine. But Jalen Johnson, he averages, what, maybe three, two, four points per game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so when it comes to being a breakout player, he fits more of that mold than someone like Oyeka, yeah. who's had the shine over the last few years. Jalen Johnson is the most unproven player that we all agree is going to be good, just purely off of vibes and traits. It's great. <laughs> as big as hell, man, he knows look, how to run. <laughs> we all agree. Hey, it looks real good. He's got to be able to do it eventually. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Pause His shot is so jacked up, but I think <laughs> I feel confident. Shoot it all. <laughs> yeah, I know it's so fucked, but I feel confident that the Hawks will do their due diligence and put him in the right places. Okay. I agree. I, I think it's a good pick. We can move on to my next team. Jumping over to the other division, I think I have the Southwest as my second division. We're gonna go with the Grizzlies. And I don't see a ton of names in terms of like unknown guys that are going to become known, just like a, like a Jalen Johnson. So I'm going to go with Desmond Bain. I think this is purely because with Ja missing 25 games, Bain is going to have a lot of time to get a lot of fucking shots up and show his offensive creation bag a little more than he has in previous years. And the start of last year, he was cooking with grease until he got hurt. He was crazy. <laughs> he was averaging like 25 points per game. And everybody was like, is this the Desmond Bain breakout? And he came back after the injury. It was good, but... He didn't recapture that volume of efficient scoring like he was early in the season. And I think now he has a 25-game runway where not only can he do that, they're going to need him to do that. So I fully expect him to take a leap and hopefully keep that up when Shaw comes back because he's going to step into that role after, like I said, a big sample size of 20-plus games. And I think this will be the year people start to realize he's like legitimately a top-five shooting guard in the league. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm I'm with that. I think I'm, I'm not too excited about like like i can i can no, no no like i can i can see this happening but when Ja comes back that's going to be the moment where i'm i think that there might be a, a drop off but in terms of like people re, in terms of people recognizing that bane is actually like really good i i do agree with you i think this might be the year for him yeah yeah and we'll see. especially with uh, that contract that he signed exactly yeah he, he has to okay Nikhil just pulled up his stats without Ja. He averages 22 points, 5 assists, and 5 rebounds without Jaw last season in how many minutes? Oh, 16, 16 games. 16 games. Listen, he takes another step. He was I averaging 25 before he got hurt. If he can up to like 24 and a half, 5 and 5 for 25 games without Jaw, he could be an all-star. 25 games is enough to have yeah, a legit all-star campaign. Like He can be this year's most improved player if he keeps huh. it up when Shaq comes back. That's fair. That's fair. Most I like improved. that. I think that's a stretch. Yeah, most of them, that's not happening. Impossible. Why not? But Why because is that possible? 24 points like per game is not a big year. of a like, gr- it's not as big year? of a jump. 
some okay. there's gonna be someone in the NBA who has you're right. Like you're missing that like production gap. You know what I'm saying? And he doesn't have the gap because sadly he's already like that. Sure. If Jordan Poole comes out and averages 26 and makes an All Star game, maybe he'll win. But yeah. I think Desmond Bain could be in the mix if he makes an All Star leap. Which I don't yeah. think is impossible. Yeah. He yeah, averaged 21, five, 5 and 4. Like, there's no way he's winning most improved unless he. <laughs> never, mind, never, mind, never mind. Never mind. Oh, no. Opportunity. <laughs> I mean, listen, there's not always a crazy breakout star. So maybe there's not going to be a Larry Mark. I don't know. But you're right. Yeah. He's probably not going to win it. But nah, if stands, I were you, I would he's gonna be. He's yeah. going to make a potential low level all star leap this year, I think. Okay. Yeah, I'd lean that way too if I were you. Either him or I would say like Kenneth Lofton Jr. Um, he's not going to be a star, not going to start or anything like that, but he's going to put up good numbers because Brandon Clark is hurt. What the fuck else are you going to play? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, well, I like it. Donovan, who's your next player? Um, all right, we're going to go to the Northwest Division. We're going to go to the Minnesota Timberwolves. My breakout player is Jaden McDaniels. Jaden McDaniels. Amazing pick. Listen, Jaden McDaniels, listen, go crazy, go stupid on defense. He can, <laughs> right? I think that this is going to be the year where his offensive game is going to become a little bit more complete. And once he starts getting there and he's like an elite, elite, like three and three and D type of guy, he's like, people are going to start recognizing like, oh yeah, Jaden McDaniels is, is him. He's already super versatile defensively. He's fantastic. He's, he's the best wing defender that, um, that the Timberwolves have. And if Minnesota, Takes us a little bit of a step forward. Listen, they were like, what, ninth or 10th in the... I think they were ninth last year. If they're just a little bit better, a little bit more consistent, all the eyes on Minnesota because Anthony Edwards there, his defense is going to fly off of the screen. And I think that he's going to have a fantastic year. Yeah, I think it's underselling him by saying he might be like one of the best 3 and D players. I think he's already that. I think he's already one of the best defenders in the league and a competent shooter. He has a potential to continue to work in more of that off the dribble shooting mid-range bag we saw last year a little bit, continue to improve his ability to drive to the rim, be a little bit of a creator for himself. He could make make a potential, like not all-star leap. I don't know if he has that ceiling, but fuck yeah, he could one day be a low-level all-star. Like he does not have a ceiling of just being an elite three and D role player. He might be oh, like that guy. I don't know. Cause why you say that? I just watched him go no, against some random ass rookie, and he dropped two for eight. He was two for eight from the field, bro, in preseason. It's preseason, I know, but I don't know if <laughs> I'll, ever, I'll ever see him in that like low tier all star light ever. And I think there's no, nothing he wrong with that. Jumps, you're right. I'm not predicting yeah. it, but like he has that's his ceiling. His ceiling is he could be a guy that has was already. He could be Bridges in a way, Mikael Bridges. One day he could be that guy that when you give him more offensive duty over the years, he can expand into that role a little more. That'll be f- amazing if they Melissa, ever I'm got glad to we're that here. point. I'm glad we're here. I'm surprised yeah, you didn't like pick that. Anthony Edwards. I think most people would have expected that. Are you saying that because you think he's already here? Yeah. Yeah. He's, people, that's fair. Be, be, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. They know him. So, so usually I would hate going this route, but I'm staying in the Southeast. The Charlotte Hornets. I have to go with Don't Mark you? Williams. Now, oh, he okay. was a rookie last season and fucking like you're production chart is fucking empty because you're a rookie you know what i'm saying but yeah. with that being said the charlotte hornets are going to be or not charlotte hornets fans they already know what they got but the rest of the nba they're going to be in for a, pre- a pleasant surprise because you have a fantastic running duck man who's a great finisher <laughs> around the rim and obviously he's a he's gonna he's one of the i don't want to say better rim protectors but he's a pretty good rim protector and for the charlotte hornets for the little that they have and all the dysfunction and you know what's going on. I don't need to say it that they have going on, bro. He is solid, consistent, and reliable. And I expect him being like whenever people think about the Charlotte Hornets, they're gonna envision Marcus Williams or Mark Williams into that atmosphere of like, yeah, he's a part of the core. He's a part of their future. Yeah. So what, all you can I, ask I for. can see that. I I'm interested now to see what his minutes are gonna be like. If he's gonna be I I assume he'll open the year as a starter. Has to uh, since Plum Dog Millionaire isn't there to steal his minutes anymore, I'm interested <laughs> yeah. to see if he, you know, makes the best use of those minutes and proves to be the guy we all think he can be because of his draft status and physical traits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I hope you're right because if he becomes that guy and they have that centerpiece to go with their premier number two overall pick wing shooter plus Lamelo Ball, like th- that could be a building block that could really complement their other stars. Exactly. That's what they need. That's what they need. And if he doesn't end up panning out, then that's just like another. Oof for the Charlotte Hornets track record, bro, of their many yeah. oofs. 
<laughs> yeah, man. I guess we'll go to my next team. Next up, we have the Clippers. And this is the team that there is not fucking a single person on here that strikes you <laughs> as a breakout player. All their players are wily veterans. <laughs> That's all they got. So I went with Kenyon Martin Jr. I think he's a guy who just got traded there. And for the last couple of years on the Rockets, under Steven Silas, he kind of struggled to find minutes. They had a lot of other people playing the same position with Jabari Smith, Tari Eason, Daniel House before, whatever. He was like a rookie. Actually, did they even overlap? No, I'm thinking of, uh, what's that other guy's name? I'm drawing blanks. Who? Who's your boy? Oh, who's that other four they have on the Rockets? The guy who was solid two years ago, didn't play a lot last year. I can never remember. Solid oh. two years ago? I'm going to be so pissed off. Jay Sean? Yeah, Jay Sean Tate. Yeah, Jay Sean Tate. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basically, Kenyon Martin was behind Jay Sean Tate the year before last. And then last year, they brought Jabari Smith in there, who had another body to take over minutes. And I think Kenyon Martin got pushed to the edges, but he might be one of the better players out of the people I just named. So now he's going to go to a team that's contending and needs him in a bench role that's going to allow his ability as a role player to shine. He's one of the best dirty work players in the league, crashes the offensive boards, a great finisher at the rim, insanely athletic. And I think you put him next to other stars and allow him to star in his role, as people say. I think he'll shine most of this year. Yeah, I definitely trust him more in Los Angeles with Ty Lu coaching him rather than <laughs> yeah. in Houston with Steven Silas is, is coaching. And also, like, not even trying to be funny, but like with Paul George and Kawhi being hurt a lot, like there's going to be a lot of opportunities for, for him to get even more minutes than what he was, Bro. you know, pro- probably slotted for in Houston. For sure. Fly in my face? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Martin yeah. Jr. is he's, the he's perfect pick-me-up when the Los Angeles Clippers are inevitably sad because of another catastrophic Kawhi Leonard injury or Paul George injury. <laughs> Hopefully it don't happen. Knock on wood, of course. But Kenyon Martin, he's the perf- he's a perfect distraction through all the sadness that they're going to be facing through this year, potentially. He's the same of the Clippers. <laughs> 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 he's going to be a fan favorite role player for sure. Yeah. He's going to be a player that any team that is trying to win games is going to be very happy to watch play for their teams. All of uh, Josh Hart. Yeah. Shout out to Josh Hart. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm with that. Great. All What's right. your next team? Okay. So I'm going to go back, back to the Atlantic, stay in New York. We're going to go to the Brooklyn Nets. And okay. I'm going with Dennis Smith Jr. Um, That's a good pick. I think that we wow. we talked about it a couple episodes ago, but just how good Dennis Smith Jr. was on defense last year. And I want you guys to listen to these numbers. Dennis Smith Jr. was ninety nine was in the 99th percentile in guards in terms of on-off defensive. Uh, yeah, in terms of defensive on-off. He was in the 84th percentile in defensive turnover percentage and 100th percentile in opponent effective field goal percentage. He was like legitimately good on defense. And I think that in Brooklyn, when you have a lot of forwards and a lot of like wings, there's not, there's not a lot of guards that are going to be in there that are like a hundred percent, like have a stranglehold on this rotation. I think that Dennis Smith Jr. with his defense, he's going to be able to get minutes. He's going to be able to make an impact for them and do a lot of, of the dirty work on the perimeter for them. So I think that he has a really good chance to to break out this year and kind of like reintroduce himself and reinvent himself in the NBA landscape. 100%. All the You're advanced cooking. stats last year defensively point to him as being one of the most effective point guard defenders in the league. We just need to see him on a relevant team so the world can notice because nobody was fucking yeah. watching him on the Hornets. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And sad to say, I don't think anyone was still, you know what I'm saying, watch him because the Brooklyn Nets are borderline irrelevant still but regards to say <laughs> nah, they like, still this is <laughs> when, ben, when ben simmons saves them then maybe they'll be back on national uh, it's just, this is just such a a weird career arc revival because no one ever knew dennis smith jr as fucking a defender or a defensive stopper that was actually weakness for him coming to the nba literally like what a lot of people thought he was gonna be is what you see what John Moran is today. He was in that vein of like yeah. explosive offensive talent. And to see him just revive his career and literally do the dirty work and still find a place in the NBA makes me happy, man. It makes a heart warm. But anyways, yeah. um, staying in the Southeast, I'm going to go ahead and talk about someone on the Orlando Magic. I'm very happy to say, get my shit off. I wanted to say Franz Wagner because he's like that on every single aspect on the on the court. He's easily one of the best well-rounded players in the entire NBA, but I feel like if anyone is going to have a breakout year, someone who better fits this mold, it has to be their recent lottery pick, 
Jalen Suggs because oh. the opportunity for him to maintain this position, the starting job at number two, is clear as day. It's there. He just was in. He just had terrible injury luck earlier earlier in the season. But when he whenever he did eventually catch his rhythm, he would be a consistent shooter for them. And on top of that, he is a fantastic off guard too. I don't think he can ever be. Well, he could be a potential like one guard one day, but I don't think that's necessarily his bag. He thrives as a two guard, you know? And so what if he's just how not I, that good though. <laughs> you said what? what? He just sucks. What if he's not nah, good? I, I think I think it's 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 a consistency for me. It's a consistency and whenever yeah. you're so injured and on top of that, your team is rifting and they're trying to find new things going on. It's hard to actually find your place, especially as a young player, you know? So if he's, as long as he start, as long as he's healthy and he can shoot threes along with, you know, maintaining this pace, Those not going too fast, a hundred mile. I know you can literally say that to any, any NBA player. <laughs> yeah, and you're like that. Literally anyone, anyone, bro. <laughs> and you're like that. If Markel Fultz is healthy and start shooting threes, he's Damian Lillard. So we'll see. Yeah, facts, facts. Exactly. But I feel like Markel's faults his spot is like more so solidified and a lot of people already see that he's like that but if Jalen Suggs can maintain shooting 33 or not 33 my bad 35 36 percent while also being productive on the defensive end which he's already a fine defensive player yeah, he's um, good. man like he can have a great season and find himself as like the as the two for that team for many years to come I can see that. Yeah, I, I would have went uh, Franz Wagner for the reasons you said. I think he's going to prove to make that jump this year and be one of the more well-rounded forwards in the league. But for this team to really take off, they need Jalen Suggs to be good. And if you think with consistency he'll be that, I, I can respect the pick. I'm just yeah, worried exactly. that he might just suck. Like, granted, yeah, <laughs> he, said, he hasn't had a chance. He's been hurt so much. But like, yeah. he hasn't shown shit when he's been on the court either, though. He's shown things. He's shown things. I mean, nothing that's like <laughs> he's uh, he, he can't he's shoot. guy. Nothing. <laughs> he's the guy. I mean, looking over here at his numbers, he shot seventy seven percent from the free throw line the first year, rookie year, and then seventy two. We're bringing out free throw like, numbers. He shot worse breakout than candidates. Year, he shot I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But Orlando Magic fans, if you're listening to the three of you out there, you know that I'm right, and I'm talking my <laughs> shit right now. If Jalen Suggs solidifies his spot, this team is making levels, and I ain't gonna lie, they're a lock to be a playoff team if he steps up and he's consistent. I guess. I mean, if he's step, if, if stepping up means he's like great, then sure, maybe. <laughs> Are the we'll Orlando see. Magic Jalen Suggs? Y'all team? laugh now. Y'all laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> Are they building around Jalen Suggs? <laughs> no, man, they're building around Jonathan Isaac. <laughs> him and his pre. Uh, Listen, he's a he's a Fox News breakout star. We'll give him that. Gross. So <laughs> he might rock the Republican team. National Convention. <laughs> he might be a star there. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Next team I got I'm going to go to the Dallas Mavericks Easy pick, Josh Green Yeah, yeah, it's, it's got to be Josh Green You low-key you could say Grant Williams If you think he's going to be better in a maybe expanded role but He's just going to be Williams. Grant Williams Yeah, I think he's just who he is like. He's, he's going to be cool, right? Yeah, he'll be, fine. he'll be solid, he'll be PJ Tucker V2 But yeah, I think Josh Green is there. He's Put into a light because he's their most promising young guy which maybe he's just the cream of a shit crop, but I think he's <laughs> he's impressive. He's a good player. He's, he's a good three and D guy who has the skills to attack closeouts and be a secondary creator off of that. And I think that's always a really nice role to have in a team with two star ball handlers. It's kind of like what made Bridges so good offensively playing alongside Devin Booker and Chris Paul is that he can post up and once he catches it, he can you know attack that dribb- dribbler. I mean, attack the defender and make some shit happen. I think Josh Green can mold into that same type of player. And if he it's similar to what you said with Jalen Suggs, if he can make that leap, that'll be what takes the Mavericks to the next level. Yeah. But also they're not starting him. We found out today they're starting um what's that rookie's name? Prosper oh, or some shit like that. Two last names. Yeah. Uh Max Salivier. I can't remember his name. But they're starting him you. and Derek Lively, so they have two rookies starting. Maybe Josh Green won't get the opportunity to have this breakout year. But if he does, I think he's the most likely player on this team. But it's like the Oliver, Clippers man. His name is Oliver uh, Maxine Olivier, Prosper. Olivier. Oh, Olivier. Olivier. Oh, <laughs> oh, my Omax. bad. They, they, they call him Omax. That's what they call him. Okay, cool. That's that. Yeah, that's that's the name. Omax. Hey, listen. That's what we will call him on this part. That, yeah. Omax yeah, is kind of hard. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, Omax is dope. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna start Omax and Derek Lively. So maybe it's one of them. But if Josh Green has that opportunity, I think he has the talent there to make something happen. I hate this that they're starting 
or they're take they're what the fuck does jo- Jason Kidd have against Josh Josh Green, bro? Because he did this shit last year when they traded for someone on the Hawks who was fucking ass. What's his name? One of the Holidays brothers, bro. And they oh, yeah. immediately took Josh Green out of the starting lineup, put this man Justin Holiday into the starting lineup, shit the bed completely, bro. And they put him in they, yeah. and they and they put Green back in the starting lineup. I don't like how they're treating him over there. And to be honest with you, I, Maybe, I feel I mean, like he listen. A lot of Mavs fans think that Jason Kidd is a terrorist and they don't like him and think he's a good coach. Maybe it's just a bad decision, but maybe it's the fact that they don't have any creation on the bench. Maybe they just feel like they need to have a six man who could do something with the ball in his hands. Do you just use such wild terms for just bad NBA coaches? Like, he's just not a good basketball coach and now he's a national threat. Like, like come on, man. Because I don't know. He's the biggest threat to humanity. God, man. I'm just telling you what the poll of the Dallas Mavericks nation on Twitter is a lot of them don't fuck with him. Maybe it's yeah. maybe it's a bad decision to bench Green. Maybe it's for lineup balance. I don't know. I haven't paid enough attention to Jason Kidd's decisions to have an opinion on my own. But yeah, I, I hope you. I hope eventually Josh Green proves to be that guy that can start because that'll be big for them. Yeah, yeah he he, prob- he probably will. He probably will. All maybe right. Omax is just the truth though. Maybe 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 he's just nice. <laughs> I don't know anything oh about him, but with a name like Omax, he might just be a Terminator. Shit, I know he passes the name. Yeah, he, just <laughs> Yo, he, on the screen. <laughs> he passes. <laughs> <laughs> he passes the name. Check, bro. <laughs> What's your next team, Donovan? Uh, <laughs> Golly. All right. Um, I guess I I'll go back to the Northwest Division. We're gonna go to the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm taking okay. Isaiah Joe. He was Isaiah my Joe. Okay. He was my most underrated player. Whenever we did that episode. I love that. I, listen, I, I guess I'm just a really big Isaiah Joe fan. He's the he's the best shooter that they have. And I think that with Shea, Giddy, and now that like Chet's there and they're going to be able to like anchor the defense around him, you are going to be able and you're going to need to have a lot of shooting around Shea who gets into the lane like that. You're going to need to have shooting around Giddy who can get into the lane and, and uh, drive and dish. And Isaiah Joe is exactly that. Um, listen, offensively, Isaiah Joe, his um, his on off numbers, he was, a, he was a plus eight. He was a plus eight. Yeah, he's off- good. In, ter- in terms of like o- overall, but then offensively, when he's on the floor, the Thunder were plus ten when Isaiah Joe's on on the floor, and it's just his his shooting last season was the first time that he actually got like consistent minutes in an NBA team, and he was good. Like, listen, like ten points a game, right? Sixty two percent true shooting. He's going to be a really valuable piece for their rotations to give them the spacing that they need to let their 100%. playmakers get into the lane. So I yeah, like their, their how they do a lot. Built around three soon to be potentially star ball handlers. None of them are good shooters. <laughs> so like, yeah. You need a Isaiah Joe to slot into that lineup and make that lineup work. If you have him and Chad Holmgren spacing the floor with Giddy SGA and Jalen Williams providing rim pressure, they're they're cooking. Exactly. Yeah. He's I, yeah. He's. Bro, he's I love that pick Donovan. He's gonna be an integral part to their success. And he's gonna have a I job in the NBA for a very long time. I love it. Yeah, yes. I love a nice role player, shooter specialist. Facts. We need exactly. more Kyle Corvers in the league. <laughs> so moving yeah, on to the up. Washington. Isaiah Joe was fifth in fifth in threes made per thirty six minutes. Pretty good. Oh he's like that. He's like that. No, he's Buddy like Hill's that. a good comparison. He's but he's smaller, Buddy Hill. <laughs> Oh my Listen, goodness! Just that is give him the dude. opportunity. He's knocking down shots. He's For gonna sure. do it. The seventy sixers fumbled him so bad. I know a lot of Sixers fans were pissed about that. They never gave him the run he should have. Just not about chaos. <sighs> bro, it's, it's, man, it's nothing but a show over there, bro. But moving <laughs> on, staying in the southeast, staying with the. Uh, or we're going over to the Washington Wizards. I have Jordan Poole for my breakout player of the year. We don't have to talk okay. about it that much. I mean. He's going to go ahead and change that culture and be the face of that organization. Opportunity, a lot of buckets. We can move on. <laughs> yeah, it makes total sense, right? He's a guy that can can score in bunches, but was a team that wasn't built yeah. to let him cook. Now he's on a team that is going to give him exclusive rights to cook. He's going to be exactly. chef of the week every week. It's going to be great for him. He well, might average 26 points, but don't we'll be see, surprised 26? if it's on 38% right. from the field. <laughs> I think if the over under is twenty four and a half, I think I'd go over. I think we'll average twenty five. Yeah, I think that's fair. I I disagree. I disagree. actually no, <laughs> maybe like twenty three point eight. I'll go there. I may maybe a little bit lower, but I won't be shocked if we average twenty five. Nah, give me twenty four. Lock it in. Yeah, Yo. listen, Larry Markin <laughs> averaged twenty four. He Jordan Bull could do that this year. 
eh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm not. I just. I really just don't like care that much about the about the Washington <laughs> the Wizards to go back and forth with you on if he's gonna average twenty five or twenty four. Like he'll be he'll be good. But All I mean, right. he has no one to defer to, so he's letting that motherfucker like fly. All right, we'll go to my next team. It'll be another quick one. Nothing to talk about here. Keegan mm-hmm. Murray for the Kings. I think, yeah, last year he got drafted as an older player who was supposed to be good right away. He was good right away. I think next year going to year two, he'll continue to be good right away. And I think he'll get better and better. And he's really the only sign of improvement this team can hope for. I think Kevin Herter is who he is. He's like 26, 27. He's going to be him. Sabonis like 28. He's going to be him. Fox made that leap last year. I don't see another big leap. Harrison Barnes is old as fuck. He's him. And I think the only sign of growth they're going to have is really going to be Kenyon Mar- uh, Keegan Murray continuing to get better as he gets more time under his belt. And listen, yeah. you have some Kings fans. They think he'll be like their best player one day. He'll be a star. I don't oh know if God. I see that. He's fucking 23 years old. I don't know if I see a huge amount of improvement left. But either way, he's going to continue to be a really high quality forward and a really solid role player for them. And I think yeah. that's, that's the best best option for this team. Yeah, that's a great synopsis. I agree. Like They're not set up for anyone else to thrive unless... Darren Fox has some more shit into his bag that we haven't seen yet, <laughs> which I'm optimistic about. But yeah, Kyle uh, Keegan Murray, he's set up to succeed on that team, and he's the only young player there to who might have another gear or another notch to head to. Other than that, they have yeah. who like Davion Mitchell, but like he's not set up to be successful, and they don't view him from what I see like a part of their future in any sort of way. He's just there as a backup until he gets moved eventually. So Keegan Murray, this <laughs> Sac- Sac- Sacramento fans want this to be your team. That's crazy. Yeah, listen, it has to be if they're going to make a huge leap. They, they, they need a Keegan Murray breakout. It's not Facts. happening. Facts. All right, I'm 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 going to say my next guy. We're going to stay in the Northwest Division. Another year two guy. Give me Christian Brown to break out for the Nuggets. Mm-hmm. Um, with, listen, with Bruce Brown yep. gone in Indiana, Chris, uh, Christian Brown, he's going to have to step up and play a lot of those roles that Bruce Brown was doing. He's going to be a very integral part to their bench, to their depth. He Listen, he had a lot of performances throughout the playoffs, especially in the finals where he came in, was the spark plug, doing things on both ends of the floor. He's going to be a very good connecting piece off the bench for them. And so, yeah, I think that he is going to elevate in this in this role with more opportunity. For sure. I think that's undoubtable. They, yeah. The reason they were fine letting him walk uh, him being Bruce Brown is because Christian Brown is there and I hate the way he spells his name. It pisses me off. I feel like <laughs> Jeff Van Gundy. But yeah, this is the best fact. There's really no other options with this team. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Speaking about almost like no other options to finish off the Southeast, the Miami Heat. Oh, Lord. It's going to be like the most random player that no one has ever heard of. You know, he has no face gain in 2K, probably a 69 overall, <laughs> zero badges, shooting 65% from three, from three, those type of vibes. So with that being said, I have potential two options. I have one written down on my list. I'm going to say his name, Haywood Highsmith, but really I want to flip it. And I want to say Julian Champagne. I think okay. out of everyone on their team, which is such a they're deep in the mud, cut, bro. They're in the mud. Like, yeah, they're in the mud. You know what I'm saying? He might be like the it? next. He might be the next in terms of getting it out of the mud, like the most nobody player, quote unquote. Like Julian Champagne, bro. <laughs> Similar to okay. Max Struess and Gabe Vincent. Okay. He's a he's a productive player. He ate in the G League last year for the San Antonio Spurs. Surprising that, that they let him go, but I guess it makes sense considering how much they invested in, in Devin Vassell. But that's neither here or there. Um Julian Champagne has the highest ceiling just because of the archetype of player that he is. I would say Hayward Highsmith, but the hope for him is to shoot 35% from being play good defense consistently. That's it, bro. And that's not a high bar. And that's not a breakout to me. Yeah. Okay. Listen, every year the Heat find one of these people to inject Thanks. Super Soldier <laughs> Serum into, and they just become fantastic role players that will get paid by another contender later. I won't be shocked at all if Champagne is the guy this year because I can't be shocked at anything with the Miami Heat. It's not allowed anymore. So I'll give it to you. Exactly. We're we're laughing now. They're making us pay later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Champagne is going to seal the playoff series as they take down the 76ers. <laughs> it's going to be Eastern great. Eastern Conference Finals MVP incoming. <laughs> all right. Next team I have, who we're going to next, the Pelicans. And okay. I wanted to go Trey Murphy. I think Pain. that was a conventional pick. Trey Murphy's awesome. I think he'll be very good. I am going Zion Williamson. <laughs> I am, oh my I'm god, are you serious? No way. This is a fraudulent breakout player I am pick. I once again believing in a Zion Williamson breakout. 
I think all we've heard all summer, listen, we hear this bullshit every summer from every team, so take it with a grain of salt, but it seems to be that he is finally focusing on his health and understands the situation he's in with the fact that he's wasted the first four years of his career because of injuries that some hand isn't his fault, some hand is, some hand is him not taking his health seriously and putting himself in the best situation to deal with his body type and the fact that he'll always be a little bit injured. It seems like now is the year where they're finally emphasizing that and he's taking it seriously. So listen, all he has to do is not get hurt, which is a humongous if. But if he stays healthy, he's guaranteed to make a jump to being one of the best players in the league. Like, it's not a question of if he can get better at this or better at that. It's literally just, if you're healthy, you're going to be all NBA. And that is the definition of a breakout to me. Listen, being a father gives you perspective, I guess. Um, <laughs> like, he's, he's out, he's that out sounds here. like I'm a father. You know, you say that. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm Isaac, not is there something you need to tell us? <laughs> I, stop that stop that stop that <laughs> chur, 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 chur. listen all i'm saying is that if zion i i no listen one this is a fraudulent pick he's been in the league for like five years he's so? every <laughs> mo put him in his top 10 players at the start of last season when he mo was, playing was crazy it. you no, I was said, not, i literally had the same belief as you with mo though but you agreed with mo and was like listen i support you because you took the extra step that i wish that i would have done in my list but i didn't did i do it <laughs> Stop it! But you I, co-signed. I this is this is a guy. This is a guy that you already think can be like MVP caliber of, of the league, and it's literally just healthy or not healthy. I don't think that that exactly like quali- breakout doesn't mean one thing. Breakout doesn't have to mean you go from irrelevant to good or from good to great. It can be anything. If you're going, no, it does not. Good, what are you talking about? You're bending no. the rules of society. It literally breakout means, just means so. At- what breakout just means you're breaking out and to hit, hitting a new tier. It can mean multiple things. If you're but there's no, but there's no tier that he's hitting. It's literally just: are you healthy or are you not? Like, there's nothing on the basketball floor. That I'm he, that's saying like, he could be an MVP voting type of guy if he stays healthy. Was he an, was he an MVP voting last year? He was in conversations when he was healthy. There were the number one. He wasn't seed healthy. Last year. I'm saying if he stays healthy, he, he can catapult healthy. himself into those conversations. Dude, he's not a breakout. You're tweaking he's not on a this breakout one, player. <laughs> you are. You, you are, Why are we acting? There's a definition to breakouts. Because we already decided that this was like a very like loose thing, but you took it too far. This is ridiculous. <laughs> First of all, why do you care? What are we talking about? <laughs> Listen, man, words mean things, okay? Okay. Yeah, no, you're bending definitions, definitions here, and I ain't with that idea. There's no definition. <laughs> no. no, this is this is too far. Bending the definition Pick Trey of Murphy. breakout. That is crazy. Give Trey Murphy his flowers. Great. Exactly. Trey Murphy's an average 14 instead of 12. Whoop de doo. I'm glad we fucking put that into writing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we used the slot to discuss Trey Murphy's extra two points per game this year. <laughs> He's Listen, hurt, so just, I don't even know we'll get to that. <laughs> there we go. I'm glad we wasted it on nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, screw you still. Screw you for life. <laughs> for screwing him, bro. Yeah, That's this, crazy. No, no, no. I can't get behind that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Get Who's your next team? <laughs> All right. Who do I have next? Uh, you know, we'll get we'll get the jazz out, out the way. And I guess we'll just finish up with the Atlanta. But but yeah, we'll get the jazz out the way. I'm picking Keontae George. Um, he was You're a, picking a rookie. He's a rookie. Basic. You're Idiot. bending the rules Moral too. What? <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what type hey, Mo, of runner are we who's on? Who's your next guy? Who's your next guy? Rookies can't be breakouts. It's impossible. No, nah, who's, 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 who's your next guy? <laughs> bro, <laughs> who's your next okay. guy? You have to. You can't break out when you okay. were in the league the last year. It's impossible. Okay. You don't, can, can you, can you say? Can you say? <laughs> yeah, Colin yeah, Sexton and yeah. There's a difference between Keontae George being a breakout player and literally Zion Williamson, who you had in in MVP talks. He was an all-star. This is equally as bad. This is equally as bad. I ain't gonna lie to you. Keontae played zero games. He just has some fantastic summer league highlights. What is he breaking out from? He just got his first no, check kidding. like two you days can, ago. I'm joking. You can pick Keontae George. I don't care. That's terrible. You should pick Colin Sexton, God damn it, or Old Chad Baji, someone else. Or whatever. I, listen, I was between I was between Keontae and and Agbaji. I just think that Keontae George is really good. I think that he's gonna no, be No, I, I agree with you. I, 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 that I, I think like that he's that. gonna be better than uh, no, Jason. I, I think that's, that's why I picked him. I think he'll immediately contribute and can be a guy that takes him to the next level. <laughs> this is some nasty it. work. Yeah. All right. Anyways, God. moving on. You guys care so much about the definition of breakout. <laughs> yes, No, bro, it's just like fuck. when it's egregious like that and you're picking Zion Williamson, it's like, okay, come on. Listen, Donovan, you're egregious too. Means, you actually might be a little bit just, worse because he didn't even play anything. I don't fucking think it's egregious. I think breakout <laughs> means as somebody who's going to take a leap and take a team to the next level. And if Zion stays healthy, he will do that. But but when we're talking about that, we're talking about it in the terms of like their basketball skill, and there's literally nothing 
that we're talking with Zion, it has nothing to do the point. with his basketball skill. It doesn't matter. One, it's just a different pick for a different reason, which is okay. It doesn't all gotta be the same reasons. There's no breakout no. though. <laughs> if, what's the, oh my god, the breakout what's will be the breakout? Him first team All NBA. You become first team All NBA. You broke out. You did something you've never done before. It doesn't matter why he did it. He wasn't able to do it last year, and he might do it next year. That's the point. Listen, why are we arguing about this definition of breakout? Come on. Because, because See, again, Donovan, egregious. you have no right to continue to argue this because you heard that and proceeded to choose Keontae George. <laughs> <laughs> As of now, like your oh, defin now your your definition holds no weight to me. I will go ahead and keep this tradition alive. You lost credibility. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. You're not standing on business like you claim to stand on business. Let's be for real. Come on now. You can't pick you out to George. God. You went from an all-star to break out to now like a rookie who didn't even play no games. So it's like, what are we doing right now? But anyway, right, this is getting off the rails. Who's let's your continue. Next team? Central out, division. You used free throw percentage to tell me that Jalen Suggs is going to be a good player this year. You, you don't best. have any right to tell it's me an indication what my definition is. <laughs> and he shot he shot worse it's from the time. free throw line. You used declining free throw numbers to be like, nah, yeah, you got it. You picked the worst player in the magic rotation. <laughs> Listen, bro, my I have validity in my argument though. If he can shoot on a consistent basis, then he got a spot. That's it. No. When it comes to the definition of breakout, he is that. Marco There's no Fultz definition of him. Okay, listen, yes, there listen. is. Look it up. Marion Webster, look, bring look, this shit up, it, bro. Let's keep it moving. Everybody gets one egregious pick. We all we all have Chicago Bulls. Let's move on. Chicago Bulls, Ayo Dusumu, they have no like for young sure. players for real other than Patrick Williams. I want to say Patrick Williams, but I'm going against my own beliefs. <laughs> Shout out to Ayo. Okay. Plus, there's nice. no Lonzo, so the opportunity is going to be there. I think if I would have broke out, he would have been did it. I think Ayo was Ayo. Facts. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the All Bulls right, are just team, mid. Facts. They have no good options. All right, next team I got the Golden State Warriors. I guess it's got to be Jonathan Kaminga. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that looks. I agree. Listen, I agree. I don't, I'll go that way. I don't, I don't think that Jonathan Kaminga is going to break out. And I don't think that you think that Jonathan Kaminga is going to break out either. <laughs> so we just got to move on. Because <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. all just lying at this point. It's either him or Moses Moody. I don't know who else you could possibly pick. They have two young guys that could possibly make a growth spurt. I'm just going to go with Kaminga. I don't know why. <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, my next one, I'm gonna go with the Blazers. I guess I guess I guess I go Shaden Sharp. For me, it was between really? okay. between. <laughs> actually, no, I'm not gonna take my other my other pick because it's kind of egregious. But I'll, I'll go with Shaden. <laughs> I'll go with Shaden God. Sharp right now. What were you gonna say? <laughs> I was gonna say DeAndre Ayton. That's um, not egregious. Oh, that's great. Okay, that's cool. even better than Shaden Sharp okay, because cool. Shaden Sharp was a rookie. I love that. Cool. Cool. Then I'll go with, with DeAndre Ayton just because I think that he's going to be in a position that. where more touches are going to are going to go his way. He's going to be in a position where his offensive game is going to be able to be expanded. He's going to be a featured role. Maybe he finds whatever effort and hustle or motor that he lost in <laughs> you know from his first two years, and he's a like legitimate two way guy that also like looks the part as well as like the the numbers match the way that he looks, and so. Yeah, I'm going to go with Aiden. Oh, yeah, yeah I respect I, that. I, I would want him pick. or... I think Anthony Simons could also make a big leap now that Dame isn't there. But yeah, I, I am still fully... I have all the DeAndre Aiden stock. Everybody's trying to get me to panic sell it. I won't do it. I think he's good. And I feel like I'm the only one left that thinks that in the world. So I'm glad to hear that you think he's at least decent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, he's good. He's solid. He, yeah. he conformed into the definition of outbreak. I love it. And I'm going to continue this trend. Next up, I have the Cleveland Cavaliers. And for this team, it's weird because they don't have any really young players who have a massive opportunity to surge production wise on the court and also numerically as well. So with that being said, I might have to lean towards Evan Mobley. If he can take another leap, that'll do not numbers. Yeah, if he takes another leap, that'll do wonders for the sac for the Cleveland Cavaliers on the court and also win total losses. Um, but when it comes to him averaging 20, I don't know if that'll happen because he has Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell on his team. But if he can pop a J here too on a consistent basis, hell, may I even say, can he hit a three-pointer <laughs> a game? Then that Cavs team looks different, and that's what they need. They need more versatility and flexibility on the offensive end, and he just needs to gain a couple pounds too. 
Listen, yeah, yeah, he has look, to look if, he could, if he could be healthy and make threes, he could break out. So, like, I'm with you. <laughs> it's everyone. <laughs> uh, no, he, has to, like you said, he has to get that strength. And if he's not going to be a good jump shooter, he has to be a good self-created rim scorer. Right now, he's a great lob threat when people are creating for him, which is you know, good when you have two dynamic guards to run, pick, and rolls with. But if he can't do anything off the dribble, it's going to be tough for that offense to stay afloat in the playoffs. So, yeah. I, I agree. It doesn't necessarily got to be shooting, though. It can be, like you said, strength to just create your shot in some way. Very right random. Kind of like, it's, it's kind of a very like young Chris Porzingis ish where like he's just tall and skinny and can't really get to his spot. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Random ass note, but Zaire Smith is on this roster. I don't know if anyone knows who that is, but he was drafted by the Philadelphia 76ers over Macau Bridges. He was traded for Macau Bridges, which is one of the like low key most egregious trades in they recent history. They gave up bridges and two first round picks to get Zion. And this <laughs> dude, I tell you, this dude almost died. All right, right, right when he got drafted, he he had a peanut allergy, bro. And since then, he he got cut from an NBA team. Forgot who he got traded to, and he hasn't play, been able to play basketball since then. And I'm just now looking. He got picked up by the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's insane. Yeah, it's a crazy story. He lost like 40 pounds in the season. Like it was something crazy, and like that's why he never recovered. It was crazy. Shout out Zaire Smith. Glad he's still on a team. Yeah, it's great. My next player is on the Houston Rockets. A lot of young guys in this team. I went with Jabari Smith Jr., who I think is going to have a much, much, much better season than last year and make people realize that he was a top three pick for a reason. I think after last year, people kind of think he's a bust and that he just fucking sucks and can't do anything. I think that's because, like everybody else in this roster, he was playing for Steven Silas, who was by far the worst coach in the NBA, to put it politely. And... When you come under a new coach that is defensive oriented, is I don't know, discipline oriented, going to make them be playing like an actual team and not just a bunch of guys out there hooping, and can put him in positions to succeed and not just have to create everything for himself off the dribble, I think we'll realize that he has this really high level catch and shoot shooting ability for a big man and can do something attacking the dribble handoffs with that. And yeah, I think he'll just prove to be a very solid player, which is all you can really ask for for a second year leap. Yeah, I'm with it. I think that I think that for for Jabari and even for the Rockets, like as a whole, having Ime there is gonna give them a lot more direction, and especially having Van Bleet there to kind of set people up. Yeah, I I like I like this pick. I think, and even whenever he was drafted, everybody kind of understood like that offensively, Jabari is gonna take time to to develop. And now that he's been in the league for a year, and again, there's there's just gonna be better structure in Houston. I I really like this pick from you. I'm with it. Yeah, yeah. It. I don't see a world where he doesn't have a bounce back here, at least in some capacity. Maybe we'll still think that his ceiling isn't what we thought it could be at the draft, but he's got to be better off of after last year. There's no way he doesn't. Yeah, this picture yeah. Nikhil just pulled up. So it looks like Jabari ate a oh, Super nice Mario mushroom. Yeah, he, he added some muscle over the offseason. Added some yeah. muscle. He was putting in work in a fucking 2K gym, bro. Got some VC and went ahead and... <laughs> tatted up his arm. <laughs> he was dude. He was putting in work for real. I love that. Yeah, I, I think he'll be good. I still, don't necessarily think he'll be a star. And I don't know if we should have went top three, but I think he'll be a very good productive player. Yeah. All right. Um, who am I gonna go? With? I'm gonna go with the Raptors. I don't think that anybody's really gonna break out this year. I think that the Raptors are um, extremely mid and <laughs> don't really have a lot of hope. So I think for them. The biggest thing that they can hope is that Scotty Barnes re- returns to yeah that he gets back on whatever development path that they thought he was going to be on, and that everything that they saw rookie of the year in his first season was 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 more than just like a Tyreek Evans rookie of the year where it's a one off <laughs> and we're never going to see that again. Um, but I think that he's going to be in a position where like the ball is going to be in his hands. Hopefully he can be like a better playmaker. He, he can shoot better. I think this one is more of just like a hope for Raptors fans and for the organization that he can take another step and, and really not even go past where he was, just get back to where you were and then we can keep moving from there. But there's a lot of yeah. improving that Barnes needs to do. Yeah, I can All see that. that. They're, they're going to, like you said, they're going to need him to improve or they're going to be extremely crap. Like just, <laughs> they're, they're, that's the only hope they have. And <laughs> extremely crap. The, during media day, it was interesting because... They talked a lot about last year they were playing selfish basketball. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of ways, it kind of felt like they were pointing fingers at Pascal Siakam. Uh, everything they were saying kind of seemed like they like they don't value Siakam like he's their best player and don't really want to build around him. 
like it wasn't very encouraging if you're Siakam and you hear your team talk about you as the best player. So that sounds to me like they're probably going to be prioritizing Scotty Barnes and also uh, Masai Ujiri's son, OG Ananobi. Those two guys <laughs> are going to get a bulk of the focus and maybe Siakam isn't going to be there that long. And if that's the case, you could see them with a new coach putting a lot of emphasis on putting Barnes in positions to succeed. Facts. They want, listen, they want 10 first round picks for OG and Anobi. They're going to, they're, they're going to ship <laughs> Pascal Siakam out for a bag of chips. And it's going to be, and it's going to be Scotty Barnes's team in no time. So yeah, he's, they're going to need him to step up. The shit they were saying about Pascal and the selfishness stuff and throwing subtle jabs at him. I was like, this is crazy. They do not respect their best player. Oh my gosh, bro. There's a whole lot of mid going on over there at Toronto. They need to make up. <laughs> what's his name? Masai needs to make up his mind and just try your best to build around Scotty Barnes and get this failed experiment over with, bro. God, it's terrible. But moving on to the, Mo- to the Milwaukee Bucks. For the breakout player, there's not really a lot of options because, again, vet heavy team, championship contention team. But if anyone has an opportunity to break out, it's going to be Marjan Bochamp because he's going to be leaned on and relied on yep. a lot. Um, with Chris Middleton still coming back, you might have to. They're gonna. They're gonna be times probably where he's gonna be out of the lineup, and Marshawn is logically the only is probably gonna be the next person up for that. And uh, he can do a lot of things on this team that, you know, a lot of other people or a lot of other players on their roster aren't best equipped to do. He can be a fucking consistent great finisher while also hounding the glass and all that little good stuff. You know, that's the only hope for them to do for him. That's the only hope for him and if he can develop into that while also hey can he pop a three like we said there's the consistency uh when it comes to the list hey if he could shoot hey he's up there you know what i'm saying <laughs> so <laughs> he, right. if he he's definitely shoot, on the he's list. court he'll be a good player <laughs> yeah bro so he's the only one who really fits this mold of breakout player no, yeah he, he has the opportunity to be an effective role player for them from a position of need i i can see this yeah, yeah. i'm with it I'm on with to it. my next team we are going to circle back to the Pacific Division and close it out with the Phoenix Suns. I went with Nazir Little. I think this can be similar to who did I pick earlier? Kenyon Martin Jr., where I love it. he is a guy that is decent. I don't think he's as promising in any specific area as Kenyon Martin is as a finisher and rebounder and all that stuff. But I think he'll be a big wing defender on a team that desperately needs big wing defenders and some young juice in their lineup. So I think he'll have the opportunity to use his strengths in a very limited role and shine in that role. And I, was, I don't even know if he's that like good, but opportunity alone, I think he can <laughs> be somebody that makes a bigger name for himself with the Suns this year and the you know the microscope yeah. they're going to be under. Yeah, yeah you could have picked really anybody on their bench. <laughs> even <laughs> <Tatum> even <laughs> exactly even even Eric Gordon and been like he's gonna have a breakout year just because oh they're gosh. gonna have they're gonna have a lot of guys that they need <laughs> to step up because their top three is so top heavy. You know, so I like I like this pick. Yeah, yeah. Nazir Little's yeah, a player yeah. who he was in the archetype of I want to say like they just felt like there was an era of NBA draft basketball where there was a bunch of Josh Jacksons and he was lumped into that <laughs> athletic mean <laughs> defender. But can you fucking shoot for the life of me, please? And Nazir Little was that. <laughs> and over the last few years for the Portland Trailblazers, <laughs> he developed an actual consistent three point shot while also doing the viable Same things healthy. like playing menacing <laughs> defense. So. He's a, he's a great Staying player, healthy, and I don't think he's going to be... No, he already knows how to knock down threes. That's my that's the thing, and I know that he's yeah. going to be one of the... He's going to be a fan favorite over there. He's going to be yeah. a consistent piece. No, for sure. He, he can be a good person, part of that closing lineup for them if things go right for him, which would be a big upgrade from where he was at in Portland where he's kind of just toiling away. Yeah. Yeah. All right, my next, my next pick, I'm going to go to the Philadelphia 76ers. I was on this train last year, kind of had to delay it a little bit, this is going to be, this is finally going to be Tyrese Maxey's <laughs> breakout year. I don't think that James Harden is going to be on this team by December. And I think that by that point, Maxey will have control of the offense. He's going to be able to run it and be their point guard. And he's taken a leap every year offensively. And I, listen, if not now, win, right? <laughs> this team is in huge Boy. fluctuation. And it's about time that they give Maxey the keys. It's going to happen. He's going to make another jump, and everybody everybody already loves Tyrese Maxey. It's like, oh, he has that dog in him. Now is when his play matches up with the amount of love and you know adoration that everyone has for him. 
Yeah, it, so. it has to be him, right? Like, if, if you're losing Harden, your only hope for keeping Joel Embiid happy is Maxi becoming an all-star. I'm becoming a little bit skeptical that he has that ceiling in him. But, listen, if Harden goes, somebody has to get those touches, and he's an efficient scorer. If he can keep that up and continue that level of efficiency with the increased touches for a whole season, it'll be hard for him to not become an all-star. Facts. Yeah. Big yeah. facts. I like that. So, to round this off... The Indiana Pacers, your breakout player of the year, will 110% be wait, Obi wait, wait, Toppin. Wait, don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, okay. I was going to say it at the same time. I was going to say, is it oh. Obi Toppin? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure we're all going to say nice. Obi Toppin. Yeah. Um, good pick, good pick. This is a per- picture-perfect fit because the type of offense that they play, who he's playing next to at five, fucking Tyrese Maxey's his point guard, and Obi Toppin is one of the better athletes in the NBA who loves to play above the rim, and he's just someone who unfortunately got thrown into a situation to where he really wasn't needed as much. You know, he was there around the same time as Julius Randle, and then they re-upped. They gave Julius Randle a fucking fat-ass bag, and that then made Obi Toppin redundant. Why did they draft him? <laughs> I know, exactly. I fucking hated it, bro. I fucking hated it, but it is what it is. I can't and stand so, this, man. And so, you know, like, they, they just yeah. fumbled. They just literally derailed three years of his NBA career, and I'm I with the type of with the type of progression that I've seen him make with the very limited touches on the court, him improving his free throw percentage, which is a great indicator to see how good of a shooter someone can be. Yeah, uh, he shot like eighty percent from the line last year. Before that, seventy five. Before that, seventy or some shit like that. The improvement is there. Now we just need to see him get more touches and him playing high flying offense, running up and down the court in transition while also being meh defensively. Like yo, this this is a per- this is a picture perfect place for him, and he's set up to go ahead and average maybe thirteen points per game. An efficient thirteen <laughs> points per game, which is great. That's that's listen, yo, listen, that's a that's, that's a big improvement. That's, breakout. that's a big improvement. That's breakout. That's textbook yeah. a breakout. He went from averaging seven <laughs> points per game, bro, <laughs> in fifteen minutes. To 13? He, he can easily get up to yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I know. That's not that's funny. Big. I, I, that's I was big. just expecting a bigger number, and the and the way you just like built up this whole yeah. thing. Like, <laughs> points per game. <laughs> yeah. That sounds how so disgusting I am, bro. Listen, not yeah. not everybody can be a superstar, Isaac. Okay, thirteen points. is... <laughs> It's very solid. That's no, at sure. minimum, I, too, bro. I'm very That's happy for Obi Toppin. I like yeah, the perfect position. Him. Being next to a ball handler that can feed him dunks and having a center that can stretch the court and keep that open. Don't don't pause me on that. That was not. <laughs> that, that was not. <laughs> you just said it with so much gumption. <laughs> that it was just like okay, gumption. Like, <laughs> Are you pausing me because I was too excited about dunks? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you just you. you the way you said, like, listen, if you put him next to a ball handler, and I was just like, okay, like, <laughs> oh my God. relax, relax, relax. We can't talk <laughs> Anyways, about nothing. Calm down. He's going to run the court and catch lobs. Tyrese Halliburton <laughs> is one of the best passes in the league to give him those lobs. Miles Turner is one of the best centers in the league to give him space to do those lobs. If he can't succeed here, he can't succeed anywhere. So he has to break out or else he's just not going to be a relevant player going forward. He's definitely going to be an MIP 100%. candidate, top five. Think he's so? Like, yeah, for sure. I can see that. I, that, that wouldn't shock me. I, did, I just don't know if he's that good. We'll see. You have to have a certain level of talent in you that he hasn't had the chance to tell if he has or not. So we'll see if he has that bag in him. But I, I look forward to finding out. Yeah. Another guy I will be drafting in fantasy basketball. <laughs> I'm getting him before you. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> getting him. For my final team, listen, team number 10, we're finally getting out of here soon. Oh, don't this segment. So I've got a whole lot of podcasts left. My last team, I have the San Antonio Spurs. Going with the guy that just got a generational payday, Devin Vassell. Woo! I think you want to talk about most improved player candidates. This might be the favorite to win it this year. I think he's finally going to be on a team that has a centerpiece in Victor Womanyama that can maybe not, he's not going to immediately make them good, but he's going to obviously raise their floor purely off of being one of the best rim protectors in the league immediately, probably. And gonna get, they're going to have more attention on them. People are going to be watching them. For that alone, people are going to realize for the first time that Devin Vassell has been good. And now he's going to hit that tier where he has the payday to, you know, a lot of opportunity comes from locker room politics. And now being the max player on the team, he's going to be expected to take that leap and take those touches. He has that opportunity plus all the skill plus the attention. He's going to be that guy making that jump into being a low, low, low level all star type guy. I think. I Let me tell you love something. that. If pick. you want, if you want to go ahead and put some stock in Devin Vassell being most improved. You can do it. Here are some of the lists. Here are some of the names in terms of people who have better better odds to be most okay. improved player. Cam Johnson. What? Pal- 
Paolo Bancaro, Jalen okay. Green, f- Anthony okay. Edwards, uh, Jabari Smith Jr., DeAndre Ayton, Desmond Bain, Obi Toppin, Walker Kessler, Shaden Sharp, Jalen Williams, Josh Giddy, Franz Wagner. It just keeps going. Who's Shane the favorite? Green. Favorite is Mikel Bridges. Lazy pick, but I, I see it. Who's, number, who's the top br- four? Like Name off. Top four, Bridges, Cunningham, Tyrese Maxey, Anthony Simons, and then Austin Reeves. Okay, that's Austin a good pick. So maybe maybe for someone with it, but I think he'll <laughs> be in that mix for far sure. far down the list. I think that's a good bet, honestly. I think that's like a that's a smart money bet. Put the little $10 on that, see if you can win 150 <laughs> <laughs> Listen, go, go ahead and get that. He's, he's, 50, to teach how he's to 50 to 1 right now. <laughs> He's 51st. That's that's crazy. See, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. People don't know no, about the Spurs f- f- existence. 50 to 1. Oh, 50 yeah. to 1. Okay. Yeah. That's But that's what I'm talking about. Still People stands. don't know about the Spurs existence, and they don't realize he's already good and poised to take a breakout year. Like People just aren't aware he's a person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When he got that fat ass bag and Wolves announced that, everyone was like, "Who? What? Oh my <laughs> goodness!" And they just don't. For no, I don't blame don't him, but they didn't watch fucking San Antonio Spurs basketball, bro. When back when he got drafted in 2022, I believe I was praying that the Atlanta Hawks would go ahead and draft him because I just envisioned the beautiful synergy and also obviously much needed defensive presence that he provides with that insane length. Oh, no pause. No. Great. I can. Y'all no, are normal I'm, now. I'm gonna Thank God. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. But yeah, man, he, this is well, this is a well-deserved bag that he'll prove that he's worth and expect big things from him this season, bro. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And listen, hand up. I don't be watching the Spurs like that either. That's the team I watched <laughs> the least over the last two years, but I have to watch every team at least a little bit. And I've watched them enough to know Devin Vassell is definitely their best player. And it's going to be him. Listen, maybe the breakout's just Wemben Yama because he's going to be the guy that takes him <laughs> over the top. But from players they already have, it's, it's Vassell. Yeah, true. Okay. My last player, we're going with the Boston Celtics. And listen, this is the only person that I can pick is the only person that can step up. And that's Wait, O'Shea Brissett. Oh, you're going to say O'Shea Brissett? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was Who are you say going? Peyton Pritchard. He's not seen the floor. <laughs> he has to now. He has Pey- to. Peyton Pritchard. Listen, Peyton Pritchard is unplayable in playoff situations. <laughs> He's not the guy that they need to step up. They need O'Shea Brissett to step up. You need okay, somebody. Like you need some. Listen, he had a bad shooting year last year. The year before that, he shot thirty five percent from three. They're gonna need him to be big, get back um, to that level shooting because, like we talked about earlier, right now they are six deep and their bench is extremely thin. And once you start getting it. You get into Peyton Pritchard, O'Shea Brissett, Luke Cornett, those kinds of names. They need one of them to hit to have a legitimate playoff rotation. And I think having the, um, I think having the the size and the and the profile of O'Shea Brissett is what they need. So I think that he, if he if he was the breakout player for them, that would be best case scenario. I can see that. Yeah, they, they, like they definitely that. need somebody in that role, and he's the only one they have that can potentially play that role. Uh, I've, unless they think Luke Cornett is that dude, is going to be their backup big. O'Shea's the best dart throw you can throw out of a whole bunch of bad options. He's yeah. been predictive before at an okay level, and I don't see a world where next to better players, well, hopefully, I don't see, a, hopefully, there is no world next to better players. He just ends up going on this trajectory of just being a meh NBA player. So I respect that pick. Yeah. To round this off so we can go into TikTok time for the Detroit Pistons, I have similar reasons. Cade Cunningham, similar reasons as to you, Isaac. He just needs to fucking stay healthy. Although, like, Cade Cunningham is uh, already established as a good player. He just hasn't shown that consistency because of... No, the the jury's still out. The jury's still out of shit. He hasn't done shit yet. (laughs) It's all theoretical. Well, when he he has been there, though, when he has been there through his rookie year and the first whole games that he did play, like, he He did prove... He was early last year. Okay. Anyway, so my point: <laughs> <laughs> he is a starting so go, level go player. Ahead, go bro. ahead and cook. Go He's ahead a starting cook. level player, bro. And if the Detroit Pistons, like you're saying, if he, if he was ass last year, last year Isaac, if they end up, if they want to see any type of projection and scaling up the W's instead of collecting more L's, then it's gonna start and finish yep. with Katie Cunningham. It doesn't 100%. matter how good Jaden Ivy is. It doesn't matter how good the Thompson Twin is or anything like that, bro. Like it starts and finishes with him because he is the driver of that offense, and also he's gonna be a part a part of their defense as well. But when it comes to the scoring, the facilitating, especially because of the type of guard that Jaden Ivy is, like 
they need him to come through. And I think that 100%. he will revive his name this off se- or this season, similar like to like Lamelo Ball in terms of kind of being forgotten and all that, into one of the better young point guards into the NBA. Hundred percent, you're, you're cooking. If, if he's not good, then this core isn't going anywhere. They have to recalibrate and tank again to find a new number one pick because it all everything they do is around him. Jaden Ivey can be a good starting point guard. Probably not going to be the level of prospect that can be the one on the team. Amen Thompson, I mean, uh, Asar, we all love him. Only love him in this team because he can play next to a star like Kate Cunningham. If that star of exactly. Kate Cunningham isn't there, this team is as hopeless as any in the league. This entire system is broken, bro. And Cade was good. He wasn't <laughs> fucking ass at all, bro. And when I said oh, that, first, I was dotting shit up that day. That was Listen, <laughs> he was bleak, bro. But as a rookie, considering... As a rookie point guard, number one overall pick, he played well. Yeah, he shot, what, 30% from the three-point line or maybe 27. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless of the fact. <laughs> Listen, he, he played well. Did That's he make good. Shots? No. Did he make layups? No, nah, not really. But, like, he was, <laughs> <laughs> no, he was Bro, okay. he was facilitating. He, he did solid. have – he had plenty of moments, bro. He had plenty no, of moments. Yeah. He looked KD in the eyes two years ago, bro, and was like, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? So, no, KD yeah, is I, not I ass. To, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean that to say that he is – like he was putrid or anything. He shot like shit the first 12 games of last year. But For as sure. a rookie, I the reason I'm saying the jury's still out is because it's not a guarantee that he's on the path to being like a superstar. We all think that because of draft status, what he can do with that size and skill and stuff. But even though he looked good his rookie year, three-point shot wasn't falling. Rim, sc- 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 uh, rim scoring wasn't good. His burst didn't look incredible. The passing it's never looked incredible. like he yeah. can handle it. Yeah, he's a good defender. We thought he was going to be like a like a tier one passer, like Lamelo type shit. He's not that. He's a good playmaker, but he's not. An, like, listen, if you're not an elite passer, shooter, or rim finisher, you're not going to be a star player. He has to get better <laughs> at one of those things at least. And that's why I said the jury is still out because I think he can. He can probably get better at all those things, but it's not a guarantee yet. He might just be a really good player. That's not a star. Yeah, yeah. he was Time coming out of college, Time coming out of college, up. and also coming out of high school. He had a lot of eyes on him, and he was viewed as one of the more complete prospects over the last few years. Facts. And people were comparing him to the sh- he had people were saying he had shades of Jason Tatum and Luka Doncic. Those are very fucking lofty comparisons. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who are people? It may have been me. I ain't gonna lie to you. But <laughs> in regards <laughs> to the fact, <laughs> the potential is there for him to stand out as a point guard, someone who's six seven, big body. He in general is a good facilitator. You need to continue to prove that the shooting his his shot form has been has been changing over the last few years. But I'm done talking about Kate Cunningham. Let's get into TikTok time, please. The crowd eaters Let's are go. paying for it. Ah. <laughs> Let's go. As always, we're going to begin with the draft. This time, we're going to do a draft that people have actually been asking us for quite a bit in the comments over the years. Over the years. Over the past year. I mean, it's not like we're fucking four-year <laughs> veterans. But um, that's going to be a draft of only players that came out of high school. Let's so this, go. This will be an interesting one. Let's go. You, you guys know who's headlined by, but once you get past the first few, it's going to be some really interesting strategy at play. <laughs> We're do I be finally get first pick? You do have first pick. You have finally. First. You say finally. It was exactly two I know, weeks ago. I know. <laughs> yeah. Just for that, you ain't getting the first pick so, until February. It feels so long. But at the same time, at the same time, this is one of those drafts where I wish I was at three so I could double up early and get some real talent. But listen, I'm not mad with the first get pick. Get some real talent. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So let's draft NBA lineups with only players who were drafted out of high school. Who we got, Donovan? First pick. Give me LeBron James. Yep. Clear cut. Second pick, give me Kobe Bryant. Okay, there we go. This Kobe. is easy as day. Third Get pick. that out the way. Now let's really draft. Third pick, <laughs> go ahead and give me Kevin Garnett. And then I'm going to okay. double up and get Tracy McGrady. Oh, okay. I'm glad you did that because I need an elite big. Give me Dwight Howard's second pick. No, <laughs> and this is why I want. This is why I wanted to double up, but it's okay. Yep. Dwight Howard um, and Kobe. We've seen that before. It ain't end up well. <laughs> that is true. Isaac may have fumbled already. I'm gonna have a better talent this time. Steve Nash <laughs> right. isn't walking through those doors. <laughs> okay, so I have Bron, uh, give me, give me Amari Stoudemire. Okay, and Naturally. and give me Monte Ellis. Monte Ooh, okay. Ellis, fuck. <laughs> you want him in that bed? Yes. <laughs> you weren't getting You're, him. I was going to sing that Monte Ellis post, post Malone song. It was a classic, bro. He used to bang that shit out with my skull candy he headphones. A, what? <laughs> he has a post Malone song? Yes. 
I didn't even know that. Please send that. <laughs> hard as fuck. I need that. <laughs> You're a sicko. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's hard as fuck. Are you kidding me? All right. I think... Okay, you know what I'm going to go here? There's not a lot of point guards here. I'm surprised nobody picked him yet. There's one point guard. Give me Sean Livingston. <laughs> you got oh. it. Listen, mid-range king, old man game. Listen, that's, young Sean Livingston game. pre-injury? <laughs> I need that. Okay, that's fair. All right. So give me someone who's been who's had a better career than Sean Livingston. Give me Lemon Pepper Lou. I need that. All right. Okay. Sean Livingston Lemon is Pepper posting Lou. him up. Too small. You're Lemon getting Pepper destroyed Lou, by Monte McGrady. Ellis. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I need I no you're not. No, you're not. Let's relax. All right. And then at my four or five, this is Flex. Give me Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp didn't get drafted out of high school, did he? No, he didn't. He did not. Well, the, your cap. So no way. <laughs> next pick. Are you serious? No. No, he went to college. What school did he go to? University. I don't know. <laughs> Bro, what, what what school did he go to? If he, he didn't go to college. college, would never played a game due to personal reasons. But he wasn't drafted high school. He had a year. He had a year out. <laughs> Bro, y- so you trying to y'all starting to really haggle me like this? He wasn't drafted out of high school. What do you mean? <laughs> he just wasn't. You know what? All right. You know what? Whatever. Fit the whatever. Definition. Whatever. Whatever. Give me Rashard Lewis. Perfect modern day four. Oh, I was about to pick him next. That's fuck. Good. Yeah. I was, you I was let hoping me get Sean Kemp. Y'all should have shut up. Uh, <laughs> damn. All right. At my four, give me Josh Smith. You okay. bastard. You knew. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. I hate Whoa, you. Were you going to <laughs> pick him at your three? Hey, if I already lost the draft, why can't I go out with pride? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, so we have, I'm going to have Stoudemire at my four. Let me go ahead, get my five. The homie, give me Jermaine O'Neal. <laughs> yeah. I knew you were going to go this show old ass. <laughs> you knew he was going to end up on my team. So I have uh, O'Neal at the five, Stoudemire at the four. And, you know, give me a, a classic LeBron James teammate. Give me J.R. Smith. Fuck, I was picking that match. was Everybody nice. ruining my team. Yeah, that was nice. I like that, Donovan. I like that. Oh, I was banking on having him. I'm fucked. Damn. Ah, who do I pick here now? Ooh. Okay. I got an audible. I'm, I'm going to put... Oh, wait. Damn. Okay. I got an audible. Give me Deshaun Stevenson. Ooh, LeBron stopper, circa yeah, 2011. Need a, good, need a good role player there on the wing. Yeah, he had to. a great mohawk. I like that pick. Listen, Deshaun. <laughs> listen, him and Dwight Howard at the center position. Listen, that's that's some defense right there. <laughs> yep, <laughs> prime Kobe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might be cooking. Oh, uh, Sean Livingston is six gonna... seven. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be so bleak for me. But you know what? Give me the best nine finger dunker ever, Gerald Green. <laughs> <laughs> Give me Gerald Green, bro. The highlights are gonna be fantastic. Ah, Listen, man. if we're playing in 2K with these lineups, you're cooking. I'll say that. You do Hell have an yeah. all highlight team. That that's what you're <laughs> at. You told me I, I don't think you're winning games, get... but like, but listen, you're Fuck winning the Instagram comments. <laughs> I'm putting you on ball is life, bro. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I got that's Lou how you constructed Williams. your team. And you T-Mac, succeeded. Good job. You're not winning Gale games. Gail Green. <laughs> and then I got Rashard Lewis and KG. This is a nice team for what I was given. For what you were given. <laughs> <laughs> you're Kevin Garnett and Tracy McGrady. Like, you're given something really great. <laughs> Listen, my role players are fucking steep drop off. <laughs> okay. I got. On my team, I have Sean Livingston, Kobe Bryant, Deshaun Stevenson, Josh Smith, and Dwight Howard. Okay. Space is disgusting. Pretty Solid. Good. Okay. I have I have LeBron James, Monte Ellis, J.R. Smith, Amari Stoudemire, and Jermaine O'Neal. Okay. Not I mean, bad. Yeah, LeBron not bad. necessarily helps. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> yeah, nah. Isaac, your team spacing is fucking horrendous. <laughs> Everybody's spacing is fucking horrendous. <laughs> All these teams are Mine is not. You miss me with that, boy. I got Lou, I got Lou Will and McGrady. Are you kidding me? Rashard Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you horrendous. Have spacing and nothing else. Lou Will, Rashard Lewis, and Gerald Green. Fucking yuck. Uh, throw up. Are you here. kidding me? You're talking about K- yuck? You K- got K- Jay Smooth next to... Oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, hell no. We ain't doing Literally this. So you, defender, who's KG, locking up on your team? It's not debatable. Listen, you have to outscore me. 
Good luck. You have Sean Livingston. I can score Jalen Green. And Jay Smooth. <laughs> and, and you have Dwight Howard on your team. Spacing is Which egregious. It's not hard you to can't, outscore. You can't you're outscore not a nine finger man. Get you're out not of here. scoring on either one of our teams. <laughs> your team isn't good at offense or defense. I don't want to and, hear anything. Uh, about oh, outscoring. whoa, 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 whoa. Now, this is all this is insane slander right now. This is literally Who's slander. Passing? Who's, <laughs> you have Tracy McGrady and KG taking turns playing exposing basketball. Oh, hell no. Bring up the Lou William highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> I'm not trying to see that. Uh, that's funny. Okay. So next thing we got. I told you guys earlier in the episode, we're going to get back to Jimmy Butler's fucking hair. This is what we do. And we are here. This is what we right do. Right now, we're going to do. We're going to put every Jimmy Butler haircut into a tier list. Okay. And I, I feel like I know where you guys are going to go. And yep. it's already making me upset. <laughs> He's had about six notable haircuts in his career. And yeah, we're going to put them all in a tier list. It's going to be hilarious. So let's put all of Jimmy Butler's haircuts into a tier list. <laughs> How First off, it? we have young Jimmy Butler with the buzz cut. You got to just put this at, at B. This is very like, <laughs> just fine. It's very sta- <laughs> yeah, it's very standard. Nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. Not outlandish. He just, he just had to find himself. Had to find yeah, his hair, bro. This is a 21 year old man. It is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Clean shaven, just got drafted. You know what I'm saying? Like you're doing what you're supposed to do, showing your professionalism. I like it. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> looks like he's, he looks like he's here for a job interview for sure. Yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> Solid B. Next up, we have Jimmy Butler's infamous fake dreadlocks. <sighs> y'all, know, y'all know I hate these. Y'all know you I see, hate these. <laughs> and I would love to put them in F. But there's oh. actually worse. So I actually, I've gotten I used to them. Yeah, put them in D. Yep, yep. They're they're okay. See, D, D the is. only reason why y'all say D is because he don't have no fucking facial hair. Like that's the real <laughs> exactly. jarring part about that's, it. Like the no facial hair action with the dreads out of nowhere. It's crazy as hell. So horrible. I, I can't be mad at that. Yeah. Terrible dread extensions, faux dreads. Come on, man. <laughs> no, Come on. That's that's why oh, I can't. Man. I can't. I cannot support that. Next up, we have his medium-sized afro from around 2014 or so. This might that, have to be an A. Is that his best? That his it best? has to be an A in my opinion. Yeah, I think we can go A. It's one of his better hairstyles. It's better, yeah. it's better than most of them. Yeah, and he's very, still like fairly clean shaven on this one. Like the facial hair <laughs> isn't like robust. So you know what? Yeah, I think A is good. Very solid hair. Okay. This is very much like sign of the times type of haircut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he looks like every exactly. recruit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was finding himself in his NBA career at this moment on the verge of stardom and all that, bro. This is this is great Jimmy Butler <laughs> yeah. before the troll. Next up, we have the 2020 bubble haircut where he was just looking like a mess. F. Holy shit. He, look, <laughs> he looks even. deranged in this. He was Consider- a madman. <laughs> Listen, I might have to put this in S because there was nothing else that he could have done. We, <laughs> we were in a pandemic. He was at Disney World hooping. Like... <laughs> Listen, Listen, for no no cut, no barber, that's actually not bad. It's kind of kind of well kept. Put that in S for me. And well I think kept. The, the, this I'm grading it on a curve persona though. so perfectly. <laughs> like this looks like Jimmy Butler how he played in the bubble, <laughs> just like a madman. Exactly. Yeah, he dragged a raggedy ass team to a top tier situation. <laughs> I can meet you in the middle if you want to say S because he did put on a historic performance. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know what? I, we'll, we'll go A. We'll go A. I like A. Okay, put it in A. Yeah. Next up, we have last year when he had the braids with the headband. S. This is S. To be this is S, his bro. best haircut that he's had in, in the league. If it kind of feels like him, kind of feels like Miami at the same time, I'm rocking with it. Okay, I can rock with that. Yeah. Next up, no we have this year's media days emo cut Jimmy Butler. <laughs> Hold on, he bro, he has a I hear voices in my head ass haircut, bro. They counsel me, they understand. No, like he, he is standing up, up for all I'm the emo him. boys in America. <laughs> Shout out to you, bro. Randy Orton theme song ass haircut. Get the fuck out of here with the piercings and the oh, you crazy as hell. Oh my god, he's going in. He's going in. <laughs> Touching the goddamn door no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Don't you dare put that in S. This isn't even, even F. This is a new category. This is go bald. That's what this is. This is lower than F. I'd rather you have no hair 
than show uh, up outside the house looking like this. This is terrible. <laughs> Listen, have some respect. You would Jimmy. understand after the turmoil that he went. They were dangling Damian Lou across his face. He was doing Dame Town, <laughs> Dame Time over the summer. He has to be sad. He's expressing his emotion. You're a hater of that? He's so misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just don't get it. You'll never understand. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> it's not meant for you to get. <laughs> oh, you are hitting this voice right now. This was definitely you in 2014. Like, hey, man. You went through this era. Oh, my God. That's fucking hilarious. I plead the fifth. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah, this is a, it's been a for sure. <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> you should request a trade to Hot Topic. This is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what it's signed with corn in the off season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> What's going in? Uh, All right, that's the end of that segment. We had to talk about it. You guys should have known as soon as we saw this haircut. This was going to be a TU three special. We're built for this, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Next thing we're going to do. I want to launch a new segment that we're going to call NBA Deal or No Deal. Okay. How this is going to work is I'm this time we're going to do it around LaMelo Ball. And how we're going to do it is every time we do this, it's going to be around one player. And I'm going to list you guys a series of trade packages. And you got to tell me if you would take the deal or not. You got to say deal or no deal. Sound good? All right. I'm, I'm with it. Do it. So NBA Deal or No Deal, LaMelo Ball edition. Get ready to slam that case down. <laughs> Shout out Harry Mandel. <laughs> the goat. <laughs> so first up, deal or no deal? Would you trade Lamelo Ball for Zion Williamson? Ding ding ding! I'm taking the oh, deal. Oh, Donovan, what the hell? Whoa, 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 whoa! We're supposed to I'm be taking the deal. I'm taking, the- it, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. <laughs> oh my god, bro! I have to. I have to. Is that easy? You're not even gonna consult. This is my franchise. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking quit, this bro. Fuck this time. Fuck you, this time. I'm taking. The, I'm taking that deal. I understand. I understand all the health issues that come with Zion Williamson, but listen, you give me one year to figure out if he can be healthy, and then if not, next year I know I can flip him for something else. So, <laughs> oh my God, bro, you're peak Charlie Hornets GM right here. This is a Charlie Hornets move, and you're correct. You would do this, bro. Put Zion Williamson along those juveniles. Oh yeah, you cooking some? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. But I would say no deal. I would say no deal because I feel like no, Lamelo Ball has rare air type of potential because of the range that he's shown that he has while also being an elite of the elite passer and him being six, seven, he's never going to be like, and it's, he's never going to be an air defender. Yeah. Rare air for sure. What does that mean? Because of his range, <laughs> like the type of player, the type of player that he is, there's not a lot of players in the NBA who has extensive range, like a Trey young or obviously Damian Lillard or Steph Curry or whatever. And he has a tendency to like those deep type of shots. And that alone separate that puts him in a different category offensively that we I mean he likes to see. take them but he can't make them like they can <laughs> you'll see the season <laughs> nice yeah I mean I understand the hesitancy given Zion's injury history I'm willing to take that bet on Zion long term so I would do it next up LaMelo Ball for J-Dub and Josh Giddy. Donovan don't say none I am declining this deal if you offer me Ooh. Josh Giddy and Jalen J-Dub I love them I love both of these players but I ain't doing this bro neither of those players will ever be the cornerstone of my franchise mm, never the okay. face but they're great Listen, they're they're cooking they're great but I, I can't I can't do this I understand I understand that they might never be the cornerstone of your franchise the way LaMelo can but you add one more piece to them too and you are cooking Facts. That is true. So, yes. Yes. Listen, those two are Brandon Miller? I don't know. I mean, that is yes. true, but it's a lot easier to find those two pieces compared to finding the piece that LaMelo Ball is. Who do you think LaMelo is? Like, Who I, do you think like, he I is really not? Think, what is wrong listen, with you? I like, look, I like LaMelo. I think he's cool. I think he's, he's going to be like a really, really good player, right? He's already made an all-star team. But let's not act like he's, you know, one of like the 10 best players in the world. And if you're getting J, if you're getting J-Dub and Josh Giddy, yeah, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. I ain't gonna <laughs> that lie. That makes sense. This, Especially this for world, a guy who's been a, a, just a little bit injury prone. What happened to shame in this world, bro? LaMelo Ball <laughs> goes out for like a chunk of the season and everybody just forgets that he's a potential superstar <laughs> player, bro. God, man, he does like, yeah, his, is- his potential still there. This one will be hard for me to do, but if you think J-Dub could be a future all-star too, I understand it, but I would hold on to the mellow. 
No, nah, I might. I might have to take it. I might have to <laughs> no it. deal. Next one: Lamelo Ball for R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and three first-round picks. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not. Those doing three first-round first round picks? picks are kind of calling me. That's a lot, if they, Listen, especially if, if they're the, unprotected. If the Knicks, if the Knicks offered this to the Hornets and they accepted it. I would be ecstatic because I knew that we just fleeced the Hornets <laughs> for everything that, that they had. Whoever gets RJ Barrett in the deal, I hate that I have like that we have taken this turn, but whoever gets RJ Barrett <laughs> loses the deal. <laughs> it's simple as no that. No matter what, it don't matter. <laughs> just RJ. Yeah, oh, you no lost matter my boy. no matter what. Because you're gonna have to get rid of him in two years or whatever. So now it's just a manual quickly and three first round picks for Lamella Ball. <laughs> Are you doing that? No, I'm not. I'm not yeah, doing you know no deal for me. I no chance in hell I'm doing this. No I deal. agree with you. <laughs> hey, you're getting blocked if you call me with that window. BS. No. <laughs> yeah, Tell the banker, getting... don't even call me. I know. Facts. Don't call me back. <laughs> <laughs> right, last one. LaMelo Ball for Paul George. This is a good one. No but deal. I might have to say no deal because no deal. I have the next Paul George on my team. Why would I want to be redundant? Plus, this man's like 34 years old. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. <laughs> I'm good on that. Give me Lamelo, the young star. Yeah, the age and the, is the age and the injury history make me want to say no. So I'm yeah, give, you, yeah I'm you get a decade of Lamelo and probably three or four more good years of Paul George. Yeah, he would Listen, be a fucking fantastic vet yeah. in that locker room, though. No more goat life, Kai Jones, man, who likes to do <laughs> those sort of creatures stuff. I'm sure all the Tom Fury hey, would man, come to an something. end. <laughs> go, go, <laughs> Joe. He's going through something. Are you telling? Are you Listen, man, four years of Paul George. That's valuable. He's he's really fucking good. I mean, yeah, like if you're the Sixers, if you're on the edge, if you were on the edge of a um, of a yeah. championship, maybe. But if you're still rebuilding, trying to find your identity, now is not the time to go trade Lamella Ball for a Paul George. If I, I was the Clippers, though, I would do this in a fucking heartbeat. Hell yeah, man. You don't have to pay <laughs> Paul George anymore. Okay, next thing we got. We're going to run back a classic old versus new. This one will be around NBA teams from the same franchise. So you guys okay. will see him on the screen, a team from a couple of decades ago versus their version this year or in a, in a relatively recent year. Okay. Very simple. So which NBA team is better, old or new? First off, we got the New York Knicks, 2013 Knicks or the 2023 Knicks. Don, I'm going to let Listen, you cook in this one. Whew. The 2013 Knicks is an all-time team. Okay, you have to oh my God! <laughs> Listen, You're this gross. is one that of bas- this is that's one New York of, basketball right there. Gross. This is one of the greatest teams to ever lose in the second round in NBA history. <laughs> okay, you don't understand. Hashtag Knicks tape was going crazy on Twitter. Listen, this is this is maybe not peak Carmelo Anthony, but peak New York Carmelo Anthony. Amari Stoudemire's knees hadn't exploded at this point. You were still good. It, you had a very young Amon Shumpert. This was this was Knicks tape was rolling. 2023, it was fire. It was good. Julius Randle's still here. I don't oh love gosh. that. RJ I think Barrett, Jalen Brunson would give them buckets. He probably yeah, nah. he probably could. <laughs> Nobody else on this 2020 on this 23 <laughs> team is giving them buckets. That's not happening. <laughs> Listen, Josh Hart is striking fear into Melo's heart. Yeah, man. You tell me, Quentin, Gr- <laughs> Quentin Grimes is. You tell me, Quentin Grimes is not going to lock up Melo. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I call Quinn Grimes the breakout player for the Knicks this year. He would get 45 put on his head by 2013. <laughs> like, let's not, let's not play around. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I, yeah, we can go 2013. That's fine. Next up, we got 2009 Lakers versus 2020 Lakers. Listen, this one is, this one is for nostalgic purposes, this one's tough. But if we're being real, 2020 <laughs> kind of clears. It's not tough. It's not tough at all. <laughs> 2020, 2020 whooping the ass. I'm sorry. I love Pau Gasol, but he ain't doing nothing with peak AD, bro. Yeah, with 2020 AD when he had that jumper, you, you can't guard that. Like, Bubble AD was a fucking monster. And obviously, shout out Kobe, 2020 LeBron was still oh, damn near peak LeBron. I, I, I don't yeah. see any world where the 2009 Lakers can... can, can uh, the only... Can ho- Listen, let 2009 Ron Artest try to defend LeBron. <laughs> Those elbows are going, right? <laughs> That's going to be a fight within two games of the series started. <laughs> Nah. And listen, see, say what you want. Derek Fisher's rainbow shot was going in that year, so I don't know. <laughs> Rondo might have a problem. 
No, See, Robbie he, randomly he, turned into a productive player again for the last time in his career. He did. He did. That is true. Somehow he recovered his career from the grave for nine months to make a championship run. That yeah, is I'm true. Instead, instead, of totally runner tests, instead of runner says trying to guard LeBron, he needs to take that energy to the easiest hurtable target, which is AD at that point in time. Give him a little yeah. and one in his back, and I, on God, he's out for the rest of the year. <laughs> back spasms. <laughs> it's over for him. That's funny. All right, next one. The 1993 Suns versus the 2023 Suns. This is so oh unfair goodness. because I'm we sorry. have not even seen these guys play. <laughs> but this feels this Give feels me 2023. Unfair. There's an abundance of buckets to be given out on Charles Barkley's <laughs> bald head. It's not. They're not going to know what to do as soon as KD, Bradley Beal, and Devin Booker. Three, four, five, six straight positions. I saw his I saw his ass, bro. They're not gonna know what to do, bro. Motion offense. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going 93. I think Peak Barkley with Kevin Johnson in his prime. I and they also have a competent defense, which the fucking 20 23 sons do not. I I'm, I'm gonna go with 93. It don't Charles matter. Barkley they ain't getting is no getting buckets. 25 rebounds a night against this new version <laughs> of the Suns. Hey, Yusuf Nurkic is literally bear hugging him. There is no rebounds for him tonight. <laughs> Yeah. Nurkic is Nurkic is not going to be able to play. He's getting ran off the floor, <laughs> fouling out immediately. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I'm not a believer that Bradley Beal is going to make this team just walk to the finals. Y'all, y'all keep on down Devin Booker, no. man. No, it's not him. <laughs> He's not the one it's, I'm worried about. It's not him. I'm doubting. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I have concerns. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have. The 2013 Clippers versus the 2023 Clippers. Guys, you know what I'm about. I'm taking the 2013 Clippers because uh, at least we can see them play together. Yeah. <laughs> this this team so doesn't sad. play. This isn't a team. <laughs> it's an idea. It's a concept. <laughs> it's <such> a construct. <laughs> yeah. The real oh, 2023 man. Clippers, the friends you made along the way. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. If also, 2023... Is dunking all over every Zubac has no chance to dunk. To to Zubac has no choice and has no chance to jump with Blake Griffin or DeAndre Jordan. <laughs> yeah, that no, is I think true. The 2013 Clippers are legitimately a fantastic team. They just notorious chokers. I, I still think they're a good enough team to get the credit over the Clippers, who are honestly past their best version of this unit. Yeah, but at the same, I forget. DeAndre Jordan was a fucking all star, dude. A multiple time all star, wasn't he? Yeah, that's fucking well, that's crazy. Because there was no good centers in the NBA, so yeah, for I'm sure. But still, <laughs> that tag that tag is still aligned with him, bro. And I don't, hey, that Lob City shit. I don't know what he's gonna do. Matt Barnes in the corner and JJ Redick too. Pre podcast, he was different. <laughs> <laughs> Pre podcast, <laughs> and Jamal Crawford. Oh my god, oh, six man of the year. Peak CP three yeah. was a problem. He, this is a great team. They were supposed to win, but they've been plagued because of the Clippers. <laughs> plagued by utter failure at every turn. Nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up we got, let me scroll down. Next up we have the 2015 Warriors versus the 2022 Warriors. 2015, easily. Easily? Uh, e- easily. I under Listen, I understand what 2022 did and everything that they were able to accomplish, 2015 was 67 and 50. They were the best team in the league. The defense was there. You had a younger Steph, a healthy Clay Thompson. Stop it. That Clay Thompson is the biggest difference here. Clay Thompson was nice, still had peak of his powers defensively, still had more offensive juice than he does now. And Draymond Mm. was fast, could shoot a little bit. And you had Iggy. That's the biggest thing. And then they also had a lot of bench depth as well around that. Crazy. Andrew Barbosa. Yeah, bro, exactly. Like, this was. Part of peak warriors, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. or pre peak warriors. So, I'm definitely in 2015. 2022 did have Wiggins and those couple months of productive Jordan Poole, but I don't think that outweighs all the advantages of just youth that 2015 had. Draymond, Jordan when Poole he could shoot, was posted up every play by Sean Livingston. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that's at least 12 so who's points guarding off the board Maurice right Bates? There. Who's guarding Mo Buckets? <laughs> Tell me that right now. And when yeah, I think of Maurice right. Spates, I just think of that random ass bunion on his head, bro. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I ain't Man, guarding him, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> leave him alone. <laughs> I will say, 2022 Steph clears 2015 Steph, so that's the one advantage that the new team has. That is true, that is but true. 2015 Clay clears 2022 Clay, so by a mile. 
Yeah. yeah. All right, we can go old. Last one. The 2012 Grizzlies versus the 2023 Grizzlies. Oh, man. The 2012 Grizzlies were a vibe, bro. <laughs> a vibe. <laughs> what a way to describe yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, they were a vibe. But, ah, man. Marcus I think I'm Gasol going 2012. A, ah. I'm going 2023, honestly. Why? Well, listen, they both have a DPOY. I think John Morant is far better than Mike Conley. And yeah, Zebo was a great player in his day. Doesn't move me the way John Morant's impact moves me. I just don't think they have enough offense. Yeah, I might have to lean 2023 yeah. because the offense is just not moving the needle as much. And although and the defense for Smart? start for 2012 is better. Yeah, nah. First of all, Jaron Jackson, Jaron Jackson Jr. is getting two rebounds a game against Marcus Hall and Zach Randolph. He Se- is getting second of, yeah, yeah, you're right. second of all, putting the straight jacket. John Morant is going to have to beat Tony Allen off the off the dribble every single play, and then go into the trees of Zach Randolph and Marcus Hall. That I, is true. He's, he's not doing it. He's not. Doing I'm just it. not moved. This team is this, too advanced, and they're not talented enough. That's the thing for me. Bro, they, they, don't, have, they don't have they don't have to be the game's gonna be 70 to 68. Like nobody <laughs> they don't have to I score. think you underrate how much better the Grizzlies are gonna be since they shipped Dylan Brooks to China and brought in Marcus Smart. That's such a meaningful upgrade. I, I did forget about good. that. I did forget about that. You're right, you're right. Yeah, like I, I think right, right, just, just wait, just wait, me. Good just, wait me. Back. just wait me. Let's go. I forgot losing Dylan Brooks put them over the edge. They're a real championship <laughs> contender now. The power of Dylan Brooks. Addition by subtraction. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. The power of Dylan Brooks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> His impact. <laughs> yeah, man. That's that segment. We can move on to the next thing. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to list some NBA players, and you guys are going to have to tell me from 1 to 10, how much do you still believe in them? Okay. So, this should be an interesting one. It's going to be guys that have either been disappointing, have either been bust, have something to prove. For a variety of reasons. Okay, okay. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you believe in these NBA players still? Ben Simmons. Two. Three. Damn. Damn. We're right Damn. here. <laughs> yeah, Y'all we're really right here. Off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. Not. No, the back issues, the, the back issues are concerning. The fact that he still cannot shoot free throws. The fact that he still cannot shoot jumpers. He just hit 10, fact- three, 10 straight the other day. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Listen, I think that that was edited. I do not believe that. <laughs> I don't it believe that. AI. that I, think it's AI. I don't believe that actually happened. Uh, I'm going to go with five. I don't think it's likely that he gets back to his old self, but I'm holding out hope for at least one more year that another year removed from injury, he can have a chance to get at least somewhat back to all-star form. But if this year comes and he's still mediocre, it's over. Yeah, after this year, there is no reason to go ahead and believe in him because he's shown no predicator to that. But I think three is a good three is a good rate because they, if he fails, how can I be disappointed? I have no expectations, so I'm yeah. leaving it at that. Okay, DeAndre Ayton. I'm gonna say a I'll five. I'll go by a six. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that that makes that makes sense. I think that I think Aiton is now going into a situation where you have a lot of guards, and it's just going to be him and Robert Williams, uh, like really like manning the the front line, manning the center position. He's going to get a lot of touches. He's going to have a lot of opportunities to run the offense through him. This is going to be kind of like a rebirth for him. So I I think that like he's already physically talented. He can take that to to a different level in Portland. Yeah. I'll go with seven. I think he's gotten a little bit underrated. People. He's playing for a coach that fucking hated his guts last year, and now he's going somewhere. Like you said, he has a chance to rewrite himself and have a second chance with a new unit that doesn't have those chemistry issues. I think he'll be better than people think next year. Yeah, but at the same time, as these young guys go ahead and continue to develop, he's inevitably just going to be unhappy again and think he should be the face, (laughs) the number one, two option, and then he's going to get kicked to the curb again. (sighs) Hopefully that don't happen, though. So I have to say five. Okay. Next up. Joel Embiid. Uh, I mean, Tr- believe in him to do what? <laughs> Not be, be big hard in the playoff. <laughs> I'm gonna say, More? I'm gonna say, a nah. Come on, I think the expectations for him are low. Can, if he can be like twenty percent better. Can you shoot? Not like you're a point guard from the field. <laughs> no, but uh, it's like, nah, I, y'all. I'm past. I'm going to. 
until he Ooh. can put together a healthy playoff run and beat the level of player he is in a regular season, I'm not going to believe he's going to do it because he's never once done it. Every single year there's been an issue, either health-related or choking-related, that has stopped him from being that level of player you want him to be in the playoffs. I'm not going to be fooled again. Having more faith in Ben Simmons than Joel Embiid is crazy. I know. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's all paper, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> listen, different standards there. But listen, I have more faith that Ben Simmons will be better next year than I do that Joel Embiid will be better next year. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll say four. I'll different say scales, four. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to say five simply because there no one cares anymore about whatever Joel B does in the postseason. I feel like you you know what he is pretty much. One more bad offseason, you're right. Nailing a coffin, it's over for him. But I'll I go ahead and give it a five. The coffin last year. Last year was a notorious choke job. The, what him and James Harden accomplished was a momentous feat of failure. <laughs> <laughs> what a line. <laughs> uh. All right, next up, Zion Williamson. I got to give this like a, th- I want to say a four. four. I want to say a four. I almost said three. Say There's no real reason. Can you just stay on the court, bro? That's it. That's literally it. I'm still on Zion Island. I still think he's going to be good. I'll go six and a half. He, I just stayed- hasn't, uh, he just hasn't been healthy at all for like a reasonable stretch. It's been four in seasons his, and he's had in his like entire 75% career. of a one healthy season. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just don't, I just don't see it. I can't, I can't get there. Only reason I'm holding on to hope is the Joel Embiid comp. He had three or four years in the beginning of his career, riddled by injuries. He got it together a decent amount, and he made MVP season type runs. I hold a little bit of faith that Zion could do the same thing if he takes his health seriously. So I'm, I'm going to still give him a chance. You're a better I'm man. Gonna, I'm going to have to, if he's I'm have to a little bit more. healthy. He's going to be all NBA. Like All he has to do is be healthy, and he's already that good. That's a little bit healthy, but that's if, a huge listen, task. If you have to, to play 65 games, I don't think that Zion will ever play 65 games in a season. Oh, Damn. come on. Eventually, he probably will. I don't... I have no reason to believe that he will play 65 <laughs> games in a season. That's crazy. I mean, you're not wrong for that. You have... He he did provide you no... No proof <laughs> yeah, There's so. no proof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, bro. Don <laughs> Williamson, I challenge you to play 65 games a season. <laughs> 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 I challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> to fuck the bucket of ice. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, Jordan Poole. Oh, 10. Oh, my God. He's going to do exactly what I expect him to do. Go ahead and collect his buckets, <laughs> the baddies, and go home, bro, and make and make everyone on a fantasy sports happy as hell. <laughs> yeah, I'll go I'll say I think he's going to be a lot better than he was last oh, year. Okay. I think that he'll be on a team that is tailor-made to let him cook, and his reputation will recover amazingly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm going to go six. I think that the team goat. I oh, think, my listen, God. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I think that this can go either way. And I think that Jordan Poole can very clearly, and it sounds like a lot of people already expect it, Jordan Poole can be a really good player on a very bad team and get a lot of just like, yep. hey, hey, you're averaging 25 because you're the only one here. He could be that or he could take another leap. But like, yes, he's going to have the opportunities to cook. But he's also been very erratic throughout his career. So there is a possibility that he's just an inefficient chucker whenever he gets to Washington and they let him take 25 shots a night. Yeah. Listen, I didn't say they'd be a good team. I didn't say they were tailor-made to win games. I just said he'll do good. I just said he'll do good. Oh, it man. can go It can go either way. But I, I'll put the six just because he is talented and I'll give him some props for that. Okay. Next up, James Harden. Oh my God! Zero, zero. Dude, he does. He deserves <laughs> nothing, bro. Zero. Listen, man. I was a James Harden stan for years. The Rockets were my second favorite team. I wrote for him to death. Done with that shit. I'm not gonna Damn. believe in them ever again. He will not Scar break my heart one more time. I'm over it. <laughs> Scar child. I tried to You're tell protecting you the inner child years you know? ago. Damn. <laughs> Listen, it was three playoff meltdowns ago. I gave up hope. Now I'm just sad every April. Yeah, no, nah, it's definitely. I'm not. I'm not sad, and I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sad. I'm not disappointed. I'm not even surprised because I expect him to <laughs> under deliver in the playoffs at this point. It just is what it is. You've been ah, used and pain. abused and confused for years, and look at you now, Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> look at you now. You're not letting, letting exactly. anybody trick off you anymore. I respect it, Never. man. Uh, Never. James Harden. <laughs> yeah, I give it a zero, bro. Anybody <laughs> tricking on me? <sighs> <Pain>. <laughs> Next up. 
Carl Anthony Towns. Once I again, say to do five. what? Five. Like I don't know. To be healthy, <laughs> to be healthy and maintain whatever status po- and to whatever positive light worth in build- the NBA. To be a star level player worth building around. Oh, that's a zero. That's a status. <laughs> That that's a, that's a, that's a zero. I think that is like just un, that's just unreasonable to ask of him. Now, <laughs> can he be? Can he contribute to winning basketball and be the third option on a team? Yeah, he he definitely has roles to where he can like be a viable piece to a very good team. I will never build my team around Car Anthony Towns, <laughs> so that's just a zero. Yeah, he has yeah, other roles that he can from- fill though. Going from GM saying that I'd rather have Car Anthony Towns back in 2015 or 2016 over LeBron and KD to now, can he be the third option on a very <laughs> good team? That's a drop <laughs> off from fall. hell. Yeah. Holy shit. I still think that if you put him with the right teams around him, put him next to a Ford like a Draymond Green that can be that mobile defender at the rim, he can be good and probably be a second option. But yeah, you're not going to win anything with him as your number one player. It's, that's Those days are done. How many years has yeah. he been in the league? Like seven, seven eight, twenty seven, eight. Can we can we figure so out real quick? Seven, hey, you got drafted in twenty fifteen, so this must oh, be twenty fifteen. Yeah, huh? He's going. He's played eight years. He's going into year nine. We've had nearly a decade of Carl Anthony Towns, <laughs> and we're still trying to say, oh well, if this happens, if this happens, he is who he is, and that's okay. Listen, Carl Anthony Towns, just shine in your role. Do what you have to do, right? <laughs> but it's just not. I'm just not going to win the championship with him as my best player. Nope. <laughs> Second, even maybe second player is a stretch. We'll see. Maybe Good Anthony team. Edwards would be the alpha he needs. Now with now with Gobert, they messed that whole situation up. Bad. What a travesty, man! Uh, if they just had Jaden McDaniels at the four, it would be so much better. <laughs> finesse of the bro, finesse of the century. Oh my gosh! All right, man. That's that segment. We got one more thing before we get out of here. This one's gonna be an open ended question. I want to ask you guys. If okay, so I'll just say the hook, and we'll get straight into it. If you were Adam Silver for a day, what would you change about the NBA? I'm deleting the Los Angeles Clippers from the entire NBA, erasing their history. <laughs> <laughs> they don't belong. <laughs> Find somewhere else. Go go, go to Taiwan, somewhere, Philippines, somewhere, not here. You don't belong here. Pack your bags, I love it. leave. You love the Clippers, hey, don't let Adios. Them stop. <laughs> bon voyage. That's, that's great. That's great. Shout, shout out to the Clippers slander. I if, listen. If I was Adam Silver, basketball wise, I'm taking out the block charge. I'm taking out. I'm Ooh, taking out the charge. Choice. The charge is not a basketball play, and it's a weak play in that. If you are just running to a spot hoping to get tackled, that is not basketball. <laughs> Put <laughs> your hands up, jump, play defense. You got people who are six ten, seven feet tall, running, running, trying <laughs> to take a charge. If you don't jump and try to get a block, <laughs> get, get, we don't need that in our listen. game. Stop that. Get that out. I got Just three tell things. Me, yeah. I would get rid of restricted free agency. I think it's criminal. I think it's bad for the players. It, I hate it. Two, I would make NBA City jerseys be once every three years instead of every year. Because the fact that we have 30 new jerseys every year has gotten to the point where it's impossible to have 30 good ideas every year. So many of them are garbage. It's not good for so the league many in any way. You got to go at least five. <laughs> not, not even three. At least five. Yeah. It's a cool idea, but the volume now, it's just too much. Especially when there's good ones that are just forgotten in history after one year. It's, it serves no one. I tried to tell yeah, you. Yeah, I can agree with that. I can and finally, agree with that. I think the in-season tournament winner should get the 15th pick in the draft right after the lottery. Mm, that's a great idea. That's insane. Yeah, Listen, then every Adam, team would try to win. A lot of line. teams will fight for that we because that's cook. an we asset can build, that Adam. players... Yeah, that's an asset that <laughs> players would actually want to fight for. LeBron would go crazy for that 15th pick so he could trade it for his next star. Maybe if they had that... <laughs> bro, oh my goodness. If he had that, you can easily you can easily move some things. You can easily move some things. Yep. That's a brilliant idea. Now so listen, uh, but counterpoint, but counterpoint, if I'm Marjan Bochamp, why am, I, why am I trying to play so that they can just draft my replacement next year with the 15th overall pick? What is he going to do? Fucking miss shots on purpose and get benched? Go for it. You're Marjan. <laughs> you have no room for error. <laughs> Come on now. Like <laughs> You're Marjan. Let's be real. <laughs> the easiest way to guarantee you get your plate replacement drafted is to miss shots on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to draft a second rounder to replace your stupid so that's a Listen, that's a that's a time for low management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's great. That's the episode. If you're still here, follow us on Twitter. I need to give somebody a PS5. It's burning a hole in my pocket. I want to give it to y'all as fast as possible. Get us to 10,000 followers, and I can Facts. promise you it's one of yours. Facts. Hurry up, y'all. What should people comment? 
Sonia, Son, Son, I'm head empty. No thoughts right now. Okay, if you're still here, comments. Uh, comment abolish city jerseys. Yes. Great Let's idea. do it. Let's see that in the comments. Let's abolish the city jerseys. And comment, I want that PS5 as always. <laughs> All right, I'll see y'all later. Peace.